Cross throughout the 94 season. They have gone through the competition with a mixture of steady defense and an overwhelming offensive front, with three players each scoring over 60 points, including two with 40-plus goals the Bears' attack has led to a perfect 12-0 regular season mark. Like the Bears, the Springfield Chiefs have a balanced team. They have relied on the defense to carry them through an outstanding season. Using their swarming defense and very solid goaltending, Springfield has allowed only 7.5 goals per game on their way to an impressive record of 11-2. One of those defeats came at the hands of the Bears in an early season matchup when the two teams collided on a frigid spring day. Both of these teams have reached the pinnacle. Today, they meet once again in a classic confrontation of overpowering offense against stifling defense. Tech and Springfield battle for the ultimate reward, the national champion. Today's game is between the Springfield Chiefs and the host New York Tech Bears. I'm Brian Evey along with Tom Judge and we're here to bring you all the action of this Division II NCAA lacrosse right, championship game. Good afternoon, Tom. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Brian, how are you today? I'm outstanding. We're getting set for our player introductions. We see the Bears Do you guys have at Tom? their bench. The Bears coming in with a record of 12-0, perfect on their season in 94, and Springfield on the other side at 11-2, Tom. Yeah, uh, these teams met early in the season, as we saw in the pregame show, uh, a highlight film of the two games, and it was a hard-fought game. Uh, Bob Felt, co-captain of Springfield College, was uh, unavailable for the game, and uh, New York Tech won 14-9, and uh, we look for a, an equally close game today as the two teams are well prepared for this game. Right, a couple of quick words about that first game, Tom. Like you said, it's the second week of the season for the Bears. It was the third game for the Chiefs. In that game, Mike Bessio, number 22 for the Bears, had seven points, outstanding performance. And another big thing to mention is the 19 penalties given up by the Chiefs. They were, in, they were down one man most of that game. And Coach Tom Bugby said that's crucial to today's performance. They have to play six on six in the offensive zone to have a chance to beat the Bears. Yes, that's uh, very true, Brian. Um, because they were in a man advantage so many times, New York Tech enjoyed a 50 shots on goal day versus 28 for uh, Springfield College. So that's a significant difference when you're talking about ball control and tempo of the game. And New York Tech loves to fire up the shots, and that's why they average almost 18 goals a game. That's right. They do an outstanding job pressuring the goalie. And the goalie for the Chiefs, Sean, Kirk, Sean Quirk, his save percentage at 67 on the season. So that's outstanding. He will be challenged today. But back to that game earlier in the season, the one bright spot for the Chiefs was Nick Savistano, netting five goals for Springfield. Yeah, um, Nick uh, had a significant day shooting. Uh, all his shots were uh, right on cage as he shot a, a high percentage. Um, but the, uh, Springfield, excuse me, is going to uh, be better off today now that Bob Felt is back on him. Their coach said they couldn't underestimate the Bob Felt's uh, absence the last game. And plus, with the bad weather in New England, they didn't get that many practice days outside. That's right. They weren't all that familiar with the Bear zone game. Let's touch on today's game now while we have a moment as the PA announcer continues with today's lineups. A couple of injuries we should check on real quickly. New York Tech, crucial to their performance today and their success. Peter Doyen, their star attackman, he's 50-50 coming into today's game. He's their second leading scorer, and they're going to need him on the field to have a chance today, Tom. Yes, he was hurt in last week's game against uh, CW Post, a victory for uh, New York Tech, obviously, as they're undefeated still. But um, his shoulder was hurt in, in such a fashion that he could barely lift it earlier during the week. He showed steady improvement during the week, and uh, I believe that he went to a doctor's appointment yesterday afternoon after Tech had their uh, light practice to get clearance. So we're going to see how effective he is today. There's Pete right there just being announced into the game. And if you notice on uh, Pete's shoulder there, uh, he's fitted uh, on his right shoulder. He's fitted with a, um, a form-fitting brace by team trainer Dean Kamvakis, uh, who designed that brace in accordance to the injury. 
So Doyen uh, is looking for a big game, and he certainly is an integral part of their offense. That's right. So a big game today on hand at the CW Post campus of Long Island University in Brookville. We see the fans eagerly awaiting the start of this NCAA Division II championship game. Once again, the Bears 12-0 on the regular season, and the Chiefs 11-2, an outstanding season. The Chiefs, after they lost that game to Tech in the second week of, season, of the season, they yes. ran off 10 straight victories. There we see the standings in the Division II bracket of the NCAA. Springfield right behind New York Tech the whole way. And CW Post at 7-5, and five, ranked at number three. So some outstanding teams in Division II. Yes, uh, Springfield actually enjoyed uh, a victory against CW Post here at this very field. So they are familiar with Hickox Field here at uh, the CW Post campus. I'm glad you mentioned that, Tom, that game against Post, because talking to Coach Tom Bugby, he said that's, that's the type of game Springfield has to play. A 6-5 win over Post is the type of game they want to get into with the Bears. They do not want to shoot, have a shootout with the Bears because obviously the Bears possess outstanding firepower on the offensive front. Okay, so if we'll the defense, our, our if the defense can step up, we'll see a fine game here today. Okay, Tom, just about on the way here. I was waiting. For this Division II National Championship game. A quick word about the uh, face-offs. Okay. Todd Mule and uh, Mark Terrio. Tell us a few things about Terrio. Yeah, Mark Terrio for Springfield College uses an awkward uh, a hand grip, actually. He's got two hands front forward on the stick, and uh, they're very close together. Um, New York Tech had problems with them the last time these two teams met, as um, Springfield College won 23 of the 31 faceoffs in that game. And 75% of the faceoffs, you're going to control a lot more of the game. Um, so. That was one area of the game where Springfield actually could control the flow, but uh, New York Tech is looking to counteract that with Gerard Mule and Nick Torrey. That's right. Another thing you want to mention about faceoffs is obviously ground balls, and that's Eugene Goodrich's main thing. You see Eugene wearing number one. We're getting set to begin. The Bears in the yellow and blue will go from right to left on your screen. And that's Kevin O'Brien that we have a shot of right there. And, and the Chiefs in the maroon will go in the opposite direction to start us off here in the first quarter of this Division II National Championship game. And number 13 on your screen right there was uh, Terrence Vetter, and this is Gerard Mule squaring off against Mark Terrio. So we see Mule way down low. He's gonna try to use his power to offset Terrio's unorthodox grip on the stick. So we'll see how this works out for Mule and the Bears. And in speaking with him yesterday, he's either going to try to keep it in close or take it himself or rake it to Goodrich. So Terrio wins the draw, and the 12th NCAA Division II National Championship game is underway. Bob Felt, Bob Felt, I should say, on the fall wing now, brings it in the offensive zone for the Chiefs. That's Jared Smith in the corner. He'll come up top to Savastino, who had, a, as we said, a perfect game in that first meeting, five goals for the Chiefs. And now near side, they come. That's Jared Smith behind the net. Te Tech is in the zone here. Stripped nicely by that Tech zone, so Tech will come back the other way. That's Eugene Goodrich. And now Doyne with the injured shoulder. Beautiful. That injured right shoulder, that is his shooting side, so we'll see how Peter does when he goes to the cage. 
Right now the bear is slowing it down. And now Mule in the middle. Mule to the cage. The shot. That's deflected Gerard, off the top and that's gonna go over the yeah, good shot by Gerard Mule. He had a lot of uh, from left to right sweeps in the first game, and he scored uh, on those a couple of times in the first game. Springfield College is opening up in a man-to-man -man defense versus New York Tech's zone defense the first time down. So, so we have two contrasting styles already. So a quick strike by the Bears. And Quirk turning Mule away with the shot high. So now the Bears with McManus will take it in. Terrence Venner has uh, the shoelace undone. He was trying to get some time there, and the ref said, no way. And now McManus moves in. The shot on the ground. Again, that's deflected. And Quirk makes the save. Quirk, as we said, 67 is the save percentage, so that's a fine number for the Springfield goalie. And now far side felt loses his footing, and the ball is picked up by the Bears and Mule now. Mule comes in. He's pressured by Klepacki. Nice hit by Felt, stripping the ball, and now the ball is loose, and it looks like Felt will come away with the ground ball. Captain of the Springfield squad moves into the offensive zone, goes left. He looks for a teammate, cannot find. He's pressured, but look, look at the zone there, Tom. Three men on him, and it's stripped nicely by the Bears on the far side. Yeah, uh, Springfield was changing uh, defense offense players over there, so Felt had no break on that shot right there. So now there. the Bears will come back the other way with the Ra Arante and Hutchinson. That's Bessio stripped, and he cannot find the handle as Jared Smith picks up the ground ball. So two quick ground balls for the Chiefs. That's another one as Smith lost the handle originally, and now it's loose on the far side. Looks like Jared Smith once again. He's bumped by Mule, and Smith can't find a handle that time as the whistle is blown. Looks like an offsides. Yeah, possession offside, so the ball just goes over to Tech. There's no penalty for that. Possession. Only a penalty on uh, offsides Guys. if you do not have possession. This so is possession K. violation against the Chiefs, this and now Tuttle K. comes way out. Uh, we're not clearing using goalies, the lights in the Tim booth Tom. right at all. Yeah, he's okay. one of the best in okay, the nation as, at it. As setting throws, up his offense. Excuse me, Brian, as he throws the long outlet passes, but that's not the situation here. And it's picked off by the Chiefs. That's Klepacki. And now the Bears find the handle. Mule once again will move in. He's pressured by Klepacki, and Sullivan puts a nice hit on him. Mule still controls, and it looks like a flag as our official has spotted a foul. Cross-checking on number 16 on Springfield. So that's uh, John Klopaki. So he'll be in the box for one minute. And Tech will enjoy their first man up of the day. 11.52 to go in the first quarter. We're just on the way here. The Brookville on the CW Post campus in Brookville. The Bears now move into the offensive end with the man up advantage. Terrence Vetter at the top. He'll pass to Mule and now... In the corner, the big man, Michael Bessio, leading his team in scoring. Now the Bears turn it over as the Chiefs gain possession. Now that's going to be a whistle on Bessio as he flagged his man with his stick. So now yeah, Bessio's out with the hit to the head. That was a uh, uh, first man up situation for Tech was very sloppy. Uh, Terrence Vetter usually plays behind the goal, but in man up situations, they put him out in the point. And on his cut through, he and uh, Bessio got crossed up on where to go afterwards. So uh, that led to that turnover. So now the Chiefs will move it along. He said, uh, Vetter, you're right. He does great work behind the net. 45 assists on the season. That led his team. He also led the you. team in scoring with 78 the first points. That's a new record. Michael Bessio. Right behind him with 77 for the season. So now the Chiefs, they'll move in. Jared Smith, again, pressured by the zone. And the penalty's released. And now Felt will control as he tries to set up the offense for the Chiefs. They move it around well, try to get a good look at the cage. Once again, from behind, Felt in front. He's pressured by O'Brien. Nice work by the long stick O'Brien. And now right in front, more pressure as it's stripped. And Tuttle comes away with it, so good defense that time by the Bears, turning away the Chiefs. They try to clear, that's a, that's a Rante. And they're working on those long passes yesterday at practice all day. Rante do a nice job clearing, and now Bessio. Bessio to the cage, the shot. That's deflected wide, but 
On it quickly are the Chiefs. Tech with the classic man ball. Vetter went after the man and Bessio went after the ball, but they didn't come up with it there. So it's over the end line and it looks like it will be the Bears' possession, Tom. As Terrence Vetter checked the, the ball out of uh, Springfield's stick over there. Springfield playing a man-on-man -man type of defense. Have outstanding speed on the defense. Coach Tom Bugby wants quick speed. You need quick speed and you need good athleticism to stay with your man. You also have to be a smart player and that's what these Springfield Chiefs are. They're smart. They don't lose their man in the offense. So now Vetter from behind where he is lethal. Finds Mule. Now Mule again hounded by a couple of defenders and now Goodrich with a ground ball. That's his thing. He's stripped however by Felt. Nice job by Felt and the Chiefs will bring it back the other way. And the classic fast break setting up. Right in front, Police finds a teammate, and that's a score. As Mark Anastas puts it in. Off the assist from Paul Police and the Chiefs with 9.47 to go in the opening quarter, take a quick 1-0 lead. Tom, Springfield strikes first. Yeah, that, that was a great fast break. They had the numbers on New York Tech. Uh, usually the last two times down uh, field, shall I say, um, Springfield College has been changing on the fly, and they've taken their defensive middies and brought their offensive middies in on the fly there. But on that break, everybody came right down the field. They had the numbers, and they worked the ball around well against New York Tech. So nice job by the Chiefs, as Tom said, moving it around, getting a good look at the cage on the fast break. And now Mule and Terrio on the face. That time, Goodrich will come away with the draw. That's not Goodrich. That's O'Brien, and he loses the handle. He picks it up again. Tries to scoop the Mule, but that eludes Gerard. And now far side, it's picked up by Bessio. Bessio will bring his stick into the offensive end. He's pressured there by Terrio. Still Bessio controls in the corner now. He's got Vetter behind the cage. And now Bessio, pressured by strong defense. Tried to cross it, could not find a teammate. And now near side, it's picked up by the Chiefs. Ball's loose again, however. Now Doyne will come away with it. He scooped it off the grass initially. Still loose, far side. Now Bessio on it for the Bears. Bessio controls, took a hit by Klopaki, but eluded him. And now Bessio moves into the offensive end. He'll slow things down as the Chiefs, once again, set up man-to-man -man defensively. Isolation on that side by Keith Flanagan, their best player. Sorry, Tom. Okay, uh, isolation for Bessio on the left side. And it's goes Bessio all the way to the cage. Deflected nicely by Quirk. That's a violation against Bessio as he stepped into the crease. Yeah, he, when he uh, took off before he released that shot, the last uh, step he took was a uh, chalk dust cloud flying just into the air. In, you're right. Just, just landed onto the line. So now the Chiefs will gain possession. And now Mark Anastas moves in. He passes in front. Deflected nicely by Tuttle. Tuttle that time. All alone with Anastas made a nice save. Should have so, bounced that one for the goal. Right. He had a, he had a good look at the cage. He elected to pass up. So now far side, the Chiefs are going to lose it out of bounds. Now they keep it in as Hutchinson pressures for the Bears and Goodrich once again with the ground ball. What can you say about Eugene Goodrich? 141 ground balls. Yeah, he's all over the field all season long for New York Tech. So now Terrio, he's pressured by Goodrich and Hutchinson, and Anastas will move in on the far side once again. He finds Smith. Smith moves to the cage. The shot goes wide, and that'll, that'll go over the end line. So the Bears will gain possession on the near side with a 1-0 lead for the Springfield Chiefs. The, the Chiefs had another mini uh, fast break going on down there. They had the numbers with just one tech defenseman at, back with Tuttle with uh, three uh, Springfield Chiefs hanging around the cage there. But uh, Tuttle came out of the cage and cut off the angle on Smith to make him shoot it wide. Okay, so now the Bears will try to clear O'Brien, Tuttle, and Arante back for the Bears. As we get a look at uh, Smith and then Kevin O'Brien. And now off. Tuttle comes way out. Tuttle, an outstanding clearing goalie. We'll get a look at him pass up now and go to Arante. Now Arante, far side, goes back to Tuttle. Tuttle now all the way at the midline. Goes to O'Brien, and O'Brien loses it. So the Chiefs that time will pick it up. Well, sloppy play by the Bears as the Bears change up. They trail 1-0 with 7.18 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, this is kind of the, one of the reasons why uh, Springfield keeps teams to uh, under eight goals a game is because they have this delayed kind of pressure on the ball. They have man-to-man, -man, but they don't force. Um, Tuttle threw that away as an unforced error. Okay, so now Nick Savistano will move in. He wears number 31 for the Chiefs. He finds Paul Police. 
Tries to find a teammate, but no connection made. And now the ball is loose. Comes out to Doyen. Doyen cannot pick it up. And now far side, the Chiefs control. And Paul Police now will bring it over the restraining line. Now near side, he's pressured by O'Brien. Paul Police with a spin move now. Finds a teammate. And now Bob Felt at the top. Finds Terrio. Terrio, the shot on the ground. Deflected nicely by the Bears. And then eventually kicked aside by Tuttle. So the Bears turning away Bob Felt and the Chiefs, but now looks like a violation against the Bears as Springfield will control the ball far side. Yeah, that's Jared Smith has, I didn't see what the referee said, so Smith uh, takes the ball from the right restraining line. Okay, so Jared Smith slowing things down for the Chiefs. Now he moves in for the attack. He goes on the ground. Nice save by Tuttle. Way to on stay the down. Ground. Goodrich picks it up off the ground once again, and now he'll go behind his own net. And the Bears try to get it out. O'Brien with the long stick on the far side. He's pressured by Paul Police, who's an outstanding attackman. Police tries to push his man out, cannot. And O'Brien moves it in as Vetter now will go in his familiar position behind the opposing cage. Vetter now comes to the side, tries to find O'Brien, who's all the way down the field for the Bears. He cannot, and now the Bears will lose possession on the near side. Uh, Tech will re retain possession. Oh, looks like uh, As Kevin Chiefs touched it on the way out, huh? Uh, well, it's a shot on goal. Once, once it's a sh uh, legitimate shot, then uh, whoever is closer to the ball when it goes out of bounds will retain possession now. Okay, so, so Kevin O'Brien's hustle. Uh, Kevin O'Brien's hustle uh, beat uh, Quirk to the sideline there. Okay, so now Vetter with Bessio to his left. He finds Bessio, but Bessio cannot Frank grab Frank the ball, Frank. and it's out of bounds, and it's going to be the Chiefs' ball. As the Chiefs move up, that's Keith Flanagan, their best athlete. It's interesting to note, Keith Flanagan, a good defenseman, will be on Mike Bessio all afternoon. So probably the two best players on each squad facing off against each other today. So now the Chiefs move in. Anastas once again, that one goes over the crossbar and out of bounds. So nice shot by Anastas, putting a lot of pressure on Tuttle early in the first quarter. 5.54 to go, one nothing lead for the Chiefs, Tom. Yeah, they're getting a lot of looks inside, and Tech uh, prides itself in packing its own defense in to eliminate that. Okay, so Jared Smith once again, Anastas again, finds teammate in front. That time the shot hits the back of the net. Our fans thought it was a score, it was not, however. So Arante now near side, tries to bring it out. Felt takes a nice swipe, strips Arante, and Felt gets the ball. Nice play by Bob Felt. Chiefs captain and the senior in his last year with the Chiefs. Definitely wants to win here today with an opportunity to win a national championship in his last year as the Chiefs lose the ball on the near side. Yeah, Felt is making his presence felt, if you'll pardon the, uh, the pun, as he's all over the field today, uh, picking up loose balls and leading teams on, uh, his team on a fast break a couple of times. And uh, the, the flow of the game, with only one goal in the first um, almost 10 minutes gone by now, is, is definitely going to uh, Springfield's way. New York Tech would like to get more shots on goal, but Springfield is the team that's working it inside. Okay, we have 5.23 to go in the opening quarter. We're very pleased you've decided to spend a portion of your afternoon with us here on CW Post. Brian Evey along with Tom Judge as the Bears trail 1-0, but they had their star midfielder, Gerard Muley, moving in with the shot and the score. That's going to knot it up at 1-1 with 5.06 to go in the first quarter. Muley, unassisted, moved, moved into the Springfield defense by himself and put the shot up into the far side. So... Nice pressure by Gerard Mule. Yeah, Mule again going to that uh, right sweep but off the spin move, put it high past uh, the goalie's stick side, which was uh, a surprise, because I thought that was going to go right into the goalie's stick, but he got it up high enough. And uh, Mule is a powerful individual. I spoke to him yesterday afternoon, and uh, he's definitely a lean, strong individual. So the, bear, so the Bears putting one through the cage, tying it up at one. Just over five minutes to go, opening quarter. And now the Chiefs control the faceoff. Far side now, J Jared Smith, he's pressured. He goes to Felt the cross, and Felt puts it in to the left of Tuttle. Nice job by Bob Felt, once again, putting the Chiefs up 2-1 to one with 4.48 to go in the opening quarter. Yeah, so Smith came down and saw uh, Felt left alone just 15 uh, yards away from the cage, and you can't leave an All-American that close. Uh, wide open, and uh, Felt drilled the left-handed shot right past Tuttle's stick side. So uh, the goalie's getting beat, T um, both on the stick side there. 
I'm, I'm just surprised. My voice... Uh, a little squeaky there, Yeah, Tom. <laughs> yeah it went up because it, the goalies are getting beat on stick side. I was expecting uh, the teams to be able to be a lot stronger than that. But nevertheless, the score is now 2-1 to one as Springfield is dictating the flow of the action, getting inside New York Tech's defense. So there's a timeout on the field. Springfield Chiefs strike quickly, a 1-1 tie quickly by the Bears. The Chiefs come back 2-1 to one now. Bob Felt putting it in. Yeah, the Bears, uh, Tom, we have to mention their offense. They score 17 and a half goals a game on the 94 season. So outstanding offense as, by the Chiefs. As, as we, we get, get a look it, at the uh, replay on the last one by the Bears, that yeah, tied it up at it. one. Yeah, it's Gerard Mule's uh, spin move coming up with a high shot right past Sean Quirk. But with um, New York Tech's offense, I, I believe right now they are missing Doyen a lot. Not only are they missing Doyen as somebody, a big target to go to inside um, on their offense, but with the loose balls, he's not taking people out. He's not smashing into people. He's not scooping up the loose balls. Careful. And right near the end of the last uh, transition at midfield, he took his first tumble of the game where he actually had contact. And uh, it did take him a couple of seconds as he stood up gingerly protecting that uh, sore right shoulder. So that uh, requires monitoring throughout the day. That's right. We have to give some of the offensive credit to uh, offensive coordinator for the Bears, Bob Cook, Coach Kelly's assistant. Coach Kelly only in his second season as the Bears coach with a 20-3 and three mark for the Bears. Right now has himself in his second year a position to win a national championship. So Coach Kelly's done a fine job with this Bears squad in only two seasons. Yeah, I, just, I had a chance to speak with Coach Kelly yesterday. And... Uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that interview on the air. It's a couple of comments with uh, Coach Kelly. So now we'll get set with 4.48 to go in the first quarter. Mule down low against Terrio. We'll see how Terrio, you can see Terrio's stick right there. He has it angled up with both of his hands facing down. Now Terrio wants a reset as he thinks Mule is over the line. As our zebras, or our zebra, Tim Murray, sets up Mule and now Terrio. In his stance, a little bit higher than Mule. You see Mule way down low trying to use the size and power advantage. There you see that was Terrio doing his thing, scooping it behind his legs. And now Terrio with the ball. He moves in as Bessio's hounded him. And now right in front, police to Anastas. Anastas goes to the side. And that's pushed aside by Tuttle. Nice job by Tuttle as Anastas once again right outside the crease. So O'Brien now clears to Arante with the long stick. Arante directing traffic. Has Bessio to his right. He finds Mule on the far side, however, and now Gerard slowing things down for the Bears. 4.15 to go in the opening quarter. 2-1 to one lead by the Chiefs. And now the Bears move in. That's Bessio behind the cage. Now Vetter in front. Bessio still hounded. Goes behind the back. Cannot make... The shot as it goes out of bounds. Not, not a wise shot by Mike Bessio right there. And the reason is because New York Tech didn't have somebody behind the goal. You got to have somebody behind the goal so you retain possession if you want to take an around the back shot like that. You don't lose possession on that. Very bad choice there by Mike Bessio. So now the Chiefs far side. That's Dan Citrone who has just checked into the game. He wears number five and this is going to be a flag on the Bears. Looks like number 21, Kevin O'Brien with the leg so the Chiefs will go up again by a man looks like O'Brien will walk to the box yeah he'll get a minute for slashing on that and then uh, Springfield is consequently going to enjoy a 60 minute man up situation as we see O'Brien uh, trying to explain to the official exactly what he did he's uh, saying uh, I didn't break any rules that was legal so now Dan Citrone he'll move it in that's Bob Felt and Dan Citrone and he has Mark Anastas on the other side now Mark They'll go behind the cage to Jared Smith and Felt once again. The Chiefs move it around, try to get a nice look at the cage. They don't let the Bears set up in that zone as they do a nice job spreading the ball around with four players over 40 points in scoring. That's Felt now. Jared Smith in front. Nice save by Tuttle as he had Jared Smith all alone right in front. Now the ball is loose and a whistle. It's going to be against the Chiefs, and the Bears will retain possession, Tom. Yeah, as, as um, New York Tech did uh, well there with their man-down defense. They had two long sticks, and then uh, Hutchinson, who's a tall kid to begin with at 6'5", 
makes it virtually three long sticks there, and that uh, caused uh, some pressure. So now Goodrich will pressure on the other end. You're right. Uh, they have tall defenders, do the Bears. O'Brien and Hutchinson, both over six foot tall, very big men. So Mule now stripped on the offensive end. Ooh, Bob Felt on the loose ball got knocked down, and we do hear a whistle. So another infraction spotted by our official, and it's going to be against the Bears this time as possession will be retained by the Chiefs. I think we had a pushing from behind there. Now Keith Flanagan, the number one defensive specialist for the Chiefs, moves it in. And now far side, once again, that's Savistano on the ground. Again, a nice save by Tuttle. Continues to shut the door. Paul Police now near side. He'll go up top to his captain, Bob Felt. Teams and already Felt slows things down. Sorry, Tom. That's okay. Teams are at even strength. On the ground that time by Daly. He went wide. So over the end line, the Chiefs will retain. Jared Smith in the far corner, pressured by Arante. And Savistano, as we mentioned, five goals in the early season meeting against the Bears, about the only bright spot for the Chiefs. Now felt in front, the shot goes wide as Tuttle just has it skip off his stick. Yeah, the New York Tech was like a bunch of piranhas there. Once uh, Savistano slipped, three New York Tech committed, uh, players uh, committed to him and leaving Bob Felt, the All-American, open from the same range he, he scored before. They got to be patient. Don't over... Uh, don't overshoot your zone here. You got to stay with it. Just under two minutes to go in the first quarter. A two to one lead by the Chiefs. They do a fine job in their man to man defense thus far as Kevin O'Brien loses the handle out of bounds. That's and the Chiefs will take over once again, Tom. The Bears are a little bit sloppy right now. That's the third turnover. Like uh, you said, rushing things. Yeah. Yeah, there was no need for that. You know, just watch the ball into your stick. They're just taking the eye off the ball. That's basic fundamental in any sport where there's a ball involved. So now the Chiefs get a look at Bob Felt, the captain in his last season. I spoke to Bob last night at the NCAA banquet held at the Mill Ridge Inn, and Bob said he wants to win today so bad he can taste it. So the Chiefs will move up now with Bob oh, Felt. No, He'll direct please. traffic. We see him in the lower portion of the screen. And now Anastas. He finds Savistano. Now to Jared Smith, who, who will go on the ground once again, and that one deflected off Tuttle's stick and into the top of the cage. So now the Chiefs up 3-1 to one with just over one minute to go in the opening quarter. New York Tech's uh, uh, defense is packed in so close that Springfield College guys are, are getting 20, 15 and 20 yard shots right on cage, uncontested. There's nobody there to check uh, Smith's stick at all. So Tuttle is just helpless right there. He's made some fine shots, but that time you're right. He, he, he really had no help from his defenders. You can see him almost calling to his teammates. Somebody's got to get around him. Somebody's got to check his stick. So Tuttle asking for help as we get a look at the happy Springfield squad on the far side with a three to one lead with just about 1.15 to go in the opening stanza. It'll be Terrio again, this time against Torrey. Bears Rich said they're going to try to mix a few Rich things up if they weren't successful early on against Terrio. They were going to try to use Mule's power against Terrio. If that didn't work, use the smaller Tory with his speed. Yes, he is. Not, not only that, Mule also plays a lot right and runs up and down the field a lot. So he needs a break every once in a while. That's why Nick Tory was brought in to face off. So Terrio won that face off, Tom. Once again, that time Tory not successful as Terrio now controls. He's hounded by a couple of defensemen and he's stripped, but a flag comes flying as Terrio hits the grass. Terrio looks like he's in some pain. Are they going to throw it down for As that's going to be against the Bears. It looks like they go off. Could be against the Arante. I'm not Jerry, too sure. It looks Jerry, like, looks like gonna Torrey going to the box. Oh, uh, no. Torrey's going to the bench. Arante's Arante going. to the box. So uh, the long stick defense huh? back in for New York Tech for the man down. Okay. I just see Hutchinson, Martinez, and uh, Sean Burns. That's right. Sean yes. Burns, 19. Co coming in for New York Tech. Oh, excuse me. Not this time. Uh, Brian Tramp is big number 36. Right. So New York Tech is playing behind the eight ball all day so far in this first period. Okay, so while we have a moment, Springfield with this timeout, we see the three to one lead by the Chiefs with about 102 to go in the opening quarter on a beautiful Saturday afternoon at the CW Post campus here in Brookville. He's right there kneeling down. I'm Brian Evey along with Tom Judge. He's the guy kneeling down. As we see Coach Cayley lecturing his troops. See Bob Cook. To the left Get ready. in that huddle. He's the offensive right, coordinator we spoke Stand about. By. Tom, why don't we throw it down to Rich D'Elia with a special sideline report. Take it away, Rich. Wait, wait.
Okay, the teams are back out from the timeout. Okay, we were sorry for the technical difficulties with that sideline report, but we'll come back to Rich a little bit later. Sorry, good job, guys. As uh, we're sure that he has some good information, as Rich always does. And so we go come back with a man up situation for Springfield, and uh, he should be in four. This is their third or fourth uh, man up Guys, of the, of the day already, four. and uh, New York Tech is just playing uh, very sloppy offensive and penalty wise. So they move it around well once again on the offense. Jared Smith, Bob Felt, Savastano, and Citrone, and he now Anastas in gets into the act as Felt puts the shot in from the left. Putting the Chiefs up by a score of 4-1 to to with 44 three? seconds to go in the opening quarter. The Chiefs putting some distance between themselves and the Bears as they continue to strike. Tim Tuttle does not have the answer. No, Tim Tuttle, as a matter of fact, he thought he was much further away from the pipe uh, in that situation. When After that goal went in, he was actually shocked at how much room that was to his right, which is where uh, Felt shot the ball. Felt is left-handed, um, and he's going right past Tuttle's stick. This is the second time they've gone right past Tuttle's stick. So some soft defense by the Bears late in the first quarter, giving the Chiefs two quick scores, and now they lead by a four to one margin as they once again control the faceoff with Terrio doing fine work that time against That's Mule. Now Terrio you know moves is? in. The Chiefs right? try to get another as Jared Smith is in the corner, pressured by O'Brien. Smith goes all the way to the line. He loses the handle, but Terrio there quickly for the Chiefs. 24 seconds to go, opening quarter. Terrio takes a hit by Bessio. Bessio gets back on defense well. Bears break it up initially, and now Arante far side with 10 seconds to go, opening stanza. Arante eludes Anastas and another whistle. That'll stop the clock with just about eight seconds to go. Opening quarter, four to one lead for this Springfield squad from Massachusetts. Again, they lost the early season matchup 14 to nine without their captain, senior Bob Felt, who's making a difference today. That's, that's right, for he's got sure. himself two goals already this afternoon. Only, we've only played one quarter as the seconds wind down in that quarter. Three more ticks to go on the clock as right in front, quickly, the Chiefs put one in before the time expires. Jared Smith that time to the right of Tuttle. Well, Tuttle came out of the cage all the way on that one. And uh, the ball deflected off his stick, but he didn't stop it enough as Eugene Goodrich tried to get in behind him and uh, block the rest of the, uh, the shot's way, but it just did not make it there. So we wind down the first quarter, Tom, with a five to one lead in favor of the Chiefs. Okay, so let's do a, a scoring recap. All right, let's watch this last play here. Look at that, right in front, Jared Smith to the left of Tuttle. Tuttle almost blinded by his defenders in front, looks like Trampas and Arante they screened them and he couldn't see the ball. Well, that that was Tuttle who had come out of the cage and and uh, Eugene Goodrich yeah. was was in in the crease there helping him out because uh, Brian Trampas no, was not was, was, not, was not close enough. Uh, again, no, Joe is the, down there. Uh, Springfield College is Joe just is getting shot after shot Rich. with nobody Joe, checking Joe. the stick. Just, every time a shot's taken, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a check stick. So it looks like the. Yeah. Springfield Chiefs so yeah, far through one here quarter have found an answer to this tricky zone game played by the Bears. I want? think the, the answer might be in, in one Bob Felt. It, you, you miss his scoring when he's out in the first game. You missed his scoring, okay, but now he's got the loose balls going on. He's got um, breaking the press against uh, New York Tech. He's coming down the field. So it's just an air about Springfield. They're a completely different team. And you uh, spoke with Keith uh, Bugby. Springfield's coach yesterday, and he did say that he didn't think the team was quite as prepared for the first meeting as they are for this one. That's right. Like you said in our opening, they weren't outdoors. They were only outdoors for about a week before that game against Tech, so they didn't have time to prepare for this zone defense that they heard so much about. So they were overwhelmed in the first half. They went into the locker room after the half in that first game. Down 8-3, to three, so they were really stunned by this Tech defense. Three? They've had two weeks to prepare for it here in this national championship game, and they've done a fine job. They're up by 5-1. Huh? We're getting set to start the second quarter. It's going to be Terry Mule now. The Chiefs going right to left, and the Bears going in the opposite direction as Mule puts up a nice fight that time, but it's loose and a whistle as... New York Tech it, wins their first faceoff. Right. Now it's 6-1 in faceoff. Uh, Mule that time gave the extra effort as Goodrich now moves in. Stripped nicely that time by Felt, and now Mule 
at the top. Mule to the cage. He's hounded and a flag as that time John Klepaki used his stick too high on Gerard Mule. Okay, New York Tech is going to enjoy their second man up situation of the day. But what's going on with New York Tech on offense is that once a man has the ball, they're just trying to beat their man and draw the defender, and they're not getting rid of the ball quick enough. Once you draw the double team off the initial... Uh, uh, beating of your man, get rid of the ball because there's somebody open and you're going to create the defense to move and then that's how the goals are scored. So that was Brad Jorgensen and not John Klepaki on the infraction against the Chiefs. So bears up a man. Now they move in. Bessio in the corner trying to find a teammate. Finds Vetter in front. But Vetter's Aaron stick Vetter. is pushed aside by Quirk. Nice job by Quirk that time stopping Vetter. Well, he had the angle shut down so Vetter had to go to the, the shorter side of the cage and... Uh, just miss, just miss. Vetter's good though. He'll yeah, come back with that same shot. He's decent. He likes to feed. He's a good, good passer. Vetter now at the top. He'll shoot this time. Goes on the ground and he nets it. Five to two. The Bears get on the board first in the second quarter. We've played 45 seconds. It's now five to two in favor of the Chiefs. Tom. Yeah, uh, Terrence Vetter was fe feeling a little bit uh, gun shy early in the game. But he's come out with two shots, and here we get a good look at it. And he gets it right on the ground, three yards in front of the crease, as you can see the cloud of dust go up. And instead of just throwing the ball right into the goalie stick, he put the ball on the ground. It's going to take a strange hop. Lacrosse balls are designed to do that. And, and that's a classic shot by Terrence Vetter there. So a nice job by Vetter. Looks like the Chiefs were set up in the defense that time for Vetter to pass, as he usually does. As we said, 78 points, 45 of those coming on assists by Terrence during the 94 campaign. So now the Bears control as Kevin O'Brien gains possession for the Bears. They lose it momentarily and now near side Arante scoops it behind his back to Bessio. Nice play by Arante as he gets on side quickly. Bessio to the cage and he's stripped by the defense. Darren Caddy that time with the nice stick work on Mike Bessio. A hit that time by Vetter, the small Vetter behind the cage. And yeah. another whistle. Uh, Bessio, when he was coming down the right sideline, he didn't have the, the proper angle there, and he had two, two, two teammates, excuse me, who were ahead of him to break, and maybe he would have been wiser to get the uh, pass off. So we'll see if Mike makes up for it right now. He's hounded again once in front, that time by Doug Ballard, and Mike, he'll take a knee as possession arrows gained by the Chiefs. And he was claiming that he was pushed into the crease there, and he might have had a case for that. So now the Chiefs will bring it back the other way. Jared Smith near side, slowly brings it down for the Springfield squad. Again, they, they lead five to two. 13 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Now Jared Smith, Bob Felt again on the offense. Nick Savistano chases it down in the corner, Tom. And this is how tentative Tech is. They have their man down defense in with the long sticks and everything to try so to shut down Springfield. And they don't want to fall any further behind than they already are. Five to two against this Springfield defense is not easy, as we said. Seven and a half goals a game allowed by the Springfield squad. That's a fine number with the 67% uh, between the pipes by Quirk. So the Bears now try to defend as Paul Police moves in. He's stripped nicely by O'Brien. Great no check. whistle that time. I know, that was a nice check. No, no whistle, no flag. Clean hit. Brian Trampas with that great hit down there. So now Bessie will try to make something happen on the offense. He's stripped again that time, but it looks like a flag comes in as our official spots another foul. Yeah, Bessio was hitting the face mask. Oh, they're going to get him for slashing. So Tech is going to be man up again for another minute. Okay, so that one comes with 12.31 to go. In the first half, the Chiefs leading 5-2. to two. So now they set up over the line. You see Vetter at the top. He's the man who does most of the feeding on the offense, as we said. 45 assists, so he'll set up a top and he'll work it around for his teammates. That's Karanikis, Ian Karanikis, and now at the top, the shot and the score by Mule in the far side. That time had Quirk totally confused on the, on the hard shot by Mule, so now five to three in favor of the Chiefs with 12-18 to go in the first half. Yeah, three passes, it's, it, and, and as soon as the double team was drawn, especially in this situation, See Mule getting that shot off right over the shoulder of the defenseman, which definitely screened Quirk on that as Quirk was late as it went uh, past his left shoulder as opposed to his right where Mule had scored earlier. But when Tech passes the ball around, once they get men to commit, then they're much better off, and that's what they're finding out right now. That time, that was just a powerful crank by Mule, just sneaking by Quirk. So now 5-3 to three is the Bears 
Terrio, Terrio uh, slowly creeping back in. Terrio win. wins the draw once again. He'll go across to Citron, and Citron puts the shot in from the near, from the far side. Now six to three in favor of the Chiefs. The Chiefs striking back quickly. Yeah, it's starting to turn out to be a shootout. And oddly enough, the Chiefs lead six to three with 12.09 to go in the first half. Unbelievable offensive production early on by the Springfield Chiefs. It all starts with the faceoff, and Mark Terrio, time and time again, controls the draw. We see him here once again as you get a look at our early score, 6-3. The Chiefs lead the Bears. Terrio now, he's pushed off his stance by Mule. Mule doing a nice job that time with the size advantage, winning the faceoff. So Mule now, far side, he moves in as he's pressured by defense, and Mule sends it over. He tried to find Bessio, but that eludes Mike. All right, it looked like a shot on goal to me the way his uh, stick was checked from this angle, but uh, he had three men on him. He should have been looking for a teammate in front of the goal. Somebody's got to be open. So now Bessio, he'll try to find a man from behind the cage. He's pressured there by Keith Flanagan. As we said, we want to keep an eye on that matchup all afternoon. Keith Flanagan and Mike Bessio, probably the two best athletes on the field. Bessio to the cage. Nice job by Flanagan from behind, stripping Bessio just as he attempted to get the shot off. Nice work by McManus, dumping his man, Dan Citron, on the near side. And the Chiefs gain possession and move it down as Quirk comes all the way out. And now far side, the Bears get back on defense as Jared Smith sets up the offense for the Chiefs behind the cage. Comes all the way around on the sweep, pressured by Arante, shot in front. That's deflected as he tried to find Anastas, and now Tuttle comes way out as Goodrich protects the cage for the Bears, and now all the way out comes McManus near side. He's watched by Terrio. Terrio looks like he's a little bit winded out there, Tom. Now near side to Bessio. Yeah, he's gonna have a chance to uh, rest a little bit here. He's not playing too hard. Bessio finds veteran end. front, Tom. Yeah, that time a little soft. Stopped by Quirk, and Quirk comes out and clears along the far side. Ooh, nice job by Goodrich coming up with the ball that time on the far side, but a whistle. And it's going to be possession for the Bears as Goodrich with his usual hustle that time after the loose ball, Tom. Yeah, he was pushed from behind on that play. So now Bessio to the cage once again. Again, stripped by Flanagan. Great work by Flanagan with the long stick. And he had Dorian wide open on the crease there. That's right, Bessio a little bit too anxious. Now, in front, Dan Citrone finds Mark Anastas, and Anastas goes around Tuttle and puts it in, putting the Chiefs up seven to three with just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. You know, New York Tech's defenders let down just then. Um, they let Anastas get behind them, and it was just a simple backdoor play. And I, I wasn't aware of who the New York Tech player was, but they were clearly beaten to the crease, and Tuttle had no uh, option but to come out there and try to stop that. Tuttle not getting a lot of help from his crease men this afternoon. He's been left all alone with the attack of the Chiefs, and time after time, they continue to pressure him, and he, he just can't shut the door every time, Tom. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. He's not getting a lot of help. So now once again, Terrio controls. Oh, nice job that time by the Chiefs keeping it in. That's Terrio with a nice diving play, and he goes behind his back to find Flanagan. Nice work. Looks like the Chiefs are just a step quicker than the Bears as Bessio and Torrey can't keep up as the Chiefs get all the way down. Now in front, Paul Police tried to find Smith, but Smith just wasn't expecting the pass, and it goes into the corner where Smith is pressured by O'Brien, but Smith finds it and gets Felt, who goes behind the back but wide to Tuttle. And that skips out of bounds over the end line, but the Chiefs retain. Yeah, with, with Felt's around the back shot there being so much different than Bessio's shot that was taken around the back earlier is that there are two Springfield College guys behind the net, so they retain possession. So now Anastas once again. Right in front, Smith. That's deflected nicely by Arante as Trampus puts a hit on Smith. No flag, however, so a clean hit once again by Trampus. Quick change by both squads. And Dan Daly of uh, Springfield ran through the crease there, but there was yeah. no call there. Oh, yes, there was. That's why the referee had the, the ball stopped. Okay, my, right. my fault. You can look at it right here. The hit by Trampus. Crushing him. That's right. Clean hit. His man did see him coming, so good call or good non-call by the officials as the Bears 
Try to knock something off this 7-3 advantage by the Chiefs. McManus all the way down. And now Vetter. Terrence Vetter. Slowly creeps behind his very comfortable spot behind that cage. And now he speeds it up a little bit. And now in front, he's he tried to find there. Doyen, who's back in the game, but Doyen couldn't find the ball that time. And now it's loose in front. Some rough play. Mule in there. Mule takes a hit no, from behind. Klopaki that he's was. Now back. Vetter comes up with the loose ball. Now Terrence, he moves I in. Nice job that ball. time by Jorgensen. Another strong defender by the Chiefs. And now Bessie all the way at top. Mm -hmm. He'll move into the cage, and he hits that one off the bar. So nice yeah, shot that time by Bessio, just wide off the bar and all the way back down for the Chiefs, Tom. Yeah, but he wasted time uh, complaining to the referee about oh, a, a slash better. instead of going after the rebound. It came right back to him. That's he right. could have been didn't, right there. He didn't get back to the rebound in time. You got to play the game and let the referees ref the game. That's what everybody's there to do. Play your role. It's like Bessio concerned more about scoring a goal that time than actually getting back on defense, getting the rebound. So... Now Trampas and Mule will move it up for the Bears as Trampas gets back on side. Now Mule, far side. You see Klopaki with the stick on Mule doing fine work on the defense. This Chiefs defense, we're seeing trademark Chief defense today as Mule moves in off the sweep. Nothing doing there as Quirk once again pushes it aside. And it goes over the end line. And then Tom, you look a little frustrated. Well, I'm not frustrated. <laughs> I'm just surprised because, uh, once again, we're going down to the isolation. And he was even double teamed. And there was no and there was no pass once he was double teamed. You know, move the ball around. We get a holding on Springfield. And uh, Tech will mm -hmm, retain mm -hmm. possession. 7-3, mm -hmm. to three, the Chiefs lead with 7.37 to go. In the opening half of play, we're at CW Post, Long Island University. Brian Evie along with Tom Judge to bring you this NCAA Division II National Championship game as Bessio has not scored a goal thus far. That time another whistle. And it's going to be against the Bears as the Chiefs will take it over. Now Flanagan near side. He's chased by Bessio, but Flanagan just a little bit too quick. Goodrich comes all the way across the field. And he's lucky, Goodrich is lucky he missed. He had a cross check and that was it. Okay, so now the Chiefs move in once again. Seven minutes to go in the half. Ball is loose. Bob Felt will chase it down. Far side, Felt on it. He's pressured by Trampus. Gets it off to Palacy. All right, Tom, let's throw it down to Mike Trezor with a special sideline report. Okay, thanks, Mike. Kevin McManus now moving in for the Bears. Goes around the cage. He's pressured by Felt. There's 6.06 to go in the opening half as the Bears try to make something happen. They trail by four. Seven to three, the Chiefs lead. Now Goodrich moves in. He dumps his man, Savistano. And now Mule. Gerard Mule, Tom, making it 7-4. Yeah, uh, Eugene Goodrich getting the penetration. And once he was double teamed, he dished the ball off to the open man. It's a basic philosophy in lacrosse. When, you, when you're double teamed, somebody's got to be open. Mule made himself um, available by being in the passing lane and had that uh, left-handed crank shot right past Quirk. Okay, so that's, that's number three for our face-off specialist, Gerard Mule. Just under six minutes to go. The Bears trail by three. As Terrio once again scoops it between his legs and Jorgensen is there. It comes back to Terrio. That time he beat Tory off the face and now Mark will move in. Tries to find Bromby but that eludes Chris and out of, over, over the end line where the Bears take over, Tom. New York Tech, I feel, is fortunate to be only trailing by three points considering that they're down 9-2 in face-offs. 
against Springfield. Springfield came out hot with the leading 5-1 in the first period, and Tech has allowed two by scoring three this period. So they're starting to feel the rhythm of the offense, and I think they can see what is working offensively. Ball movement, players being uh, cutting and making themselves available in the passing lanes as opposed to just standing behind and uh, have an isolation. Here's Mule once again, and he's wide open. He scores again. Mule that time. All by himself, right outside the crease. So now it's seven to five in favor of the Chiefs. Two quick strikes for the Bears. Now the Chiefs lead by only two with 5.07 to go in the opening half. Nice job that time by Mule, underhand, just off the ground, snuck by Quirk. Yeah, and, and, that, and that pass from Kevin O'Brien. Uh, New York Tech was working on their long passes yesterday at practice where the defensemen would find uh, the midfielders or the attackmen sneaking behind that extra layer of defense, and that's exactly what happened there. Mule found himself open in that crease, came to the cage, and with Bessio on the left side, excuse me, on the right side of the cage, they had a two-on-one situation with a defender, and uh, he had to choose to whom he was going to uh, run, and he ran at Mule just a little bit late. So New York Tech makes that 7-5 as they're starting to find their stride here. That's right, the Chiefs and on their offensive side, they love to spread the ball around. They don't rely too heavily on Felt or on Astis or Savistano. They spread it around. Gerard Mule had 29 goals on the year, so he's averaging about two and a half goals a game. He's already got four, so he's picking up the, the slack for where Peter Doyen, who was the leading goal scorer for New York Tech with 51, um, is, is lacking. Doyen hasn't scored, and, and Bessio hasn't scored, so New York Tech still has some firepower that it can go to, so it has, uh, Springfield hasn't seen all of Tech's looks. He'll move in. Jared goes across to Anastas, and Anastas puts it in over Tuttle. Now, 8-5 to five in favor of the Chiefs. Once again, Springfield gets right on top of the crease. Um, New York Tech has to stop allowing people to just go right in there. And Tuttle... See, the New York Tech is trying to pack their defense in there to stay. As we get a look at Smith, dishing it right off there to Anastas, going high. Anastas is hanging out right on the crease. Nobody there to check him. He shouldn't even be able to receive a pass there, much less get a shot off. However, so the Chiefs get on it quickly in the corner, however. And now Trampus with the long stick goes to Goodrich. Goodrich takes a hit, but he still controls. Goodrich does fine stick work. Now the ball is loose as Jared Smith takes a hit from Trampus, but Smith's still on it and a whistle. That's a possession out for the Chiefs. It's a violation against the Bears, so 3.57 to go, an 8-5 to five lead for the Chiefs as they move in once again on the offense. Paul Police at the top. He's hounded by O'Brien. Paul moves in, and he neglects to go in as he passes up to Terrio. Terrio can't find the ball as it eludes him and goes over the line, and now far side. Nice play that time by Martinez, who just checked into the game. And he gets caught. 
He gets called for pushing, so Springfield will get the uh, ball right at the restraining line. Time of game. That's Terrio giving it over to Lavogue. At 3.30 to go right. in the first half. Sorry, Tom. That's okay. As that time, finally, Tech applies the defense. Two hats on the one ball. But now they'll go into the far corner behind the cage, continuing to apply pressure as the flag comes in along the far side. So it'll be another whistle. And Arante will go for yes. slashing. So Tech in another man down situation. That's uh, five man down situations for Tech today versus three for Springfield. <coughs> so Springfield is. Tom, we're going to go to commercial. Okay. Get ready, get ready. Okay. Quick score back. that time by the Chiefs. Sorry, Tom. So now the Chiefs will go up 9-5 to five as Jared Smith puts it in to the right of Tuttle. That time Tuttle again, no help from his defenders, left all alone. So Jared Smith just outside the crease puts it in, and he puts his squad up by four. 9-5, the Chiefs lead. 2.49 to go in the half. Tuttle right there just looks totally befuddled, has has been getting no help from his defense. I'm sure he's gonna have a word with his teammates in the locker room at the half as we have a 15 minute recess today because of the national championship game, NCAA. Division two national championship game is Goodrich again on the ground ball. That's one of the constants for the Bears is Eugene Goodrich picking the loose ball up off the turf. That time he takes a hit by Klepacki. Yeah, and it will be a whistle. That's Jorgensen, excuse me, not John Klepacki. So Brad Jorgensen will go off. So Tech will have a man up situation for 30 seconds as Goodrich was pushed from behind. And they have to make this one pay off. They have to get back into that flow, they being uh, New York Tech, excuse me. And we see Ian Karanikis going to pick up the ball. They so got to move the ball around. Don't just one man hold it again. Let's get back into that flow. That's right. Some ball movement to get a good look at the cage. Karanikis will move in. And that's what Coach Kelly told you yesterday, Tom. You need good ball movement. Karanikis moves in, but a nice strip that time by the Chiefs as Darren Caddy was able to knock it out of Ian's hand. So Darren with a nice job, and now they'll try to clear it. Quirk on the far side. Just great defense by the Chiefs in this first half. Bessio can't come up with the loose ball and another whistle as we wait the call of the officials. And it looks like it's gonna be against the sprint, uh, against the Bears as we look see Coach Kelly very no, upset on the sideline. No, huh? it wasn't against the Bears, excuse me, Brian. What Coach Kelly is upset about is that New York Tech was gonna enjoy a, a breakaway without the goalie in the cage. He was upset that the whistle was uh, existent at all. Uh, the okay. push from behind with Tech with possession should have been a, a penalty with some uh, some minutes attached there, a minute at least. Okay, thanks, Tom. I missed that call. So Mule now will move in as the Bears have the advantage. He skips it off the turf, but that goes wide of Quirk. And now Bessio near side moves in. Again, he's pressured. And another flag as Bessio takes a hard hit just outside the crease. Some rough play now as Doyen moves in. Doyen with the separated right shoulder. Doesn't want to get involved in any physical play with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Yeah, it's starting to get rough out there. As Bessio made his drive to the goal, sweeping left, uh, he was cross-checked and around the neck and was driven to the turf. That was so, John Klepacki, it looked like, uh, Tom, on the infraction. But we don't see a player in the box. Yeah, so. uh, yes, he is, right next to the okay, uh, yeah, cone so over there, kneeling down, talking to the coach as, as we get a look at Doyen. Stan Packy in the, the box there. with the hit on Bessio. So now Mike will start off the Bears offense. They trail by four. Tech with another 30 man uh, man up advantage, 30 second man up advantage. So now Mule, he works with McManus. And Gerard tries to move in, but strong defense by the Chiefs. That's Darren Caddy keeping Gerard out over the line. And now Bessio. He'll go behind a Vetter. Vetter right in front. 
Nothing going on as Sean Quirk went off his stick. And now, over the end line, the Bears retain the arrow. And Vetter, again, behind the cage in front to Doyen. Doyen with his first shot of the game from the right side. Nice shot by Doyen, but a nicer save by Quirk. Again, that time, Karanikis. And another one from Vetter. Some pressure here by the Bears. Mule is stripped as the Bears are all over Quirk and the Chiefs, but a whistle. Yep. That stops the clock with 41 seconds to go in the first half. The Chiefs lead by four. Nice pressure for the first time. Some consistent pressure by the Bears offense. Yeah, uh, three shots in a row hit the pipe right there for New York Tech. Uh, Doyen looked like he couldn't hold on to that pass where he normally would have had a quick stick goal had his shoulder not been uh, as, as hurt as it is. <coughs> so the Bears that time continue to knock on the door, but Quirk refusing to let anyone in. We see the save that time by Quirk, outstretched to his right. So the Bears, they'll try it once again. They have 35 seconds to go. See what they can do. On the offense, Gerard Muley, Mike Bessio, Terrence Vetter, Peter Doyen, and Dennis McManus on the offense for the Bears. They move it around. Vetter, Muley, Torrey, and now behind the Vetter, Bessio. And he hits the crossbar on that shot there. New York Tech still has 32 seconds left. Bessio that time goes into the crease, so that's possession arrow for the Chiefs. 12 seconds to go. It's a 9-4 lead for the Springfield squad. And that was a big key that um, Springfield got that possession uh, after that shot there. Score. Score. With 12 seconds left. Tech needed another score right it's there. 9-5 to, to go. We'll nine see what five. they can do. Nine As the Chiefs control now, they're going to wind down the clock. Nine Two five. seconds to go. They're going to go into the... Locker rooms with a 9-5 to five lead. So we've played one half of this Division II National Championship game, Tom, and the Chiefs dominating on the defense and on the offense. They lead by four, 9-5 to five in favor of the Springfield Chiefs. Okay, quickly, let me give a scoring recap. In the first quarter at the 9.47 mark, Anassas scored for Springfield off the assist from Police. Mule then scored for New York Tech unassisted at the 506 mark. And less than a minute later, Felt, Bob Felt for Springfield, off an assist from Jared Smith, made it 2-1 Springfield. Smith came back with the goal himself unassisted, getting the score to 3-1. At 44 seconds left in the first quarter, Bob Felt cr cranked a left-handed shot past Tim Tuttle off a feed from Savastano, making it 4-1 for Springfield. And then Smith unassisted made the score 5-1 to one at the end of the first quarter as Springfield got off to a fast start. Starting off the second quarter, less than a minute into it, um, Terrence Venner scored unassisted for New York Tech, making it 5-2. Mule, assisted by Venner, made the score 5-3 a couple of minutes later. Then uh, Citrone came right back off the uh, faceoff for Springfield, and he scored unassisted, getting it, the lead back up to 3 at 6-3 for Springfield. At uh, the 10-minute mark of the second uh, second quarter. Anastas off a feed from Citrone made it 7-3 for Springfield. Mule then scored two goals in a row. One was a uh, feed from Goodrich and the other one was a feed from O'Brien making the Can score 7-5 Springfield. And then to round out the scoring in the first half, Anastas and Smith Jerry, can they hear the announcers? scored the last two goals making the score 9-5 at halftime for Springfield. And uh, they're enjoying the flow of the game. See Springfield conducting their halftime talks. They stay on the field. The Bears went into the locker rooms for the half. Yeah, I, th I think the Bears went into the locker room. Uh, Did perhaps so Coach Kelly could just uh, shake them up a little <laughs> bit because they're just uh, off timing their, their offense and not moving it around. Perhaps they would see that they would be successful if they continue to move the ball. They've scored their goals when moving the ball. Other than that, uh, New York Jerry. Tech is, on the defensive end is just Jerry. missing. Um, beat, the cutters the, uh, on the crease. They're right. leaving cutters right on the Jerry. crease all day long. It's and uh, like, we, we talk about Brian Trampas as the crease about. defenseman. And he's supposed I to be ultimately responsible for everybody. And also uh, Arante. And Spoke uh, about the speed, too, Tom, of these Chiefs. and They're beating the Bears on both ends of the field. They're getting back quickly on defense and getting to the cage before the Bears' defense can get back and stop and help out Tim Tuttle. He's been 
left all alone. I, th I think the term I'm looking for here is what, what happened to Tuttle is besieged. Yeah. He, he's uh, been faced with so many one-on-one -on -one situations right on the crease that uh, he's been you know, virtually helpless back there. He came out of the goal and made a couple of nice saves, cutting off angles earlier on. In the, in the game, but after a while, you just uh, enough is enough, and something's going to break down. You don't want to play those percentages for too long. Um, Tuttle himself is not enjoying a, a, a fantastic game, or not even a really good game at this point. Um, he's been beat several times from 15 to 20 yards out with uh, non-bounce shots by uh, Bob Felt and uh, Savistano and Anastas, but also, when he's been clearing the ball, he's been forced, well, unforced errors that have been at midfield as Springfield refuses to attack and pressure and leaving somebody open. And New York Tech has struggled with the clearing, too. So, Coach Keith Bugby has got his squad prepared. He gets him set for the second half. While we have a moment with about 10 minutes to go in the halftime intermission, let's take a break, Tom, with the uh, Springfield Chiefs leading through one half of play over now. the Bears, 9-5. to five. Okay, Brian Evie along with Tom Judge. We're back to start the second half of action between the Bears of New York Tech and the Springfield Chiefs. Chiefs won the first half, 9-5, to and Mule finally wins a draw against Terrio. He wins the opening second half draw as Dennis McManus controls far side for the Bears as they set up the offense. Bessio looks fresh as he moves into Vetter. Vetter behind the cage. He sets it up. He Finds Vetter on the far side. Excuse me, he finds Bessio. Now Bessio will come up top. He's got Mule over the line. Bessio one-on-one -on -one now with Flanagan. He moves around. Bessio to the cage. His shot, a soft shot. Quirk is able to grab it that time, Tom. So now 14 and a half to go. Third quarter. Quick pressure by the Bears, but turned away by Sean Quirk. Yeah, good defense there by Flanagan, not letting Bessio's stick come down and uh, bouncing it. And here comes Flanagan down into the offensive zone. Okay, so Flanagan to the cage. He goes on the ground, and that one sneaks by Tuttle, making it 10 to 5. The Chiefs are in double digits. Quickly into the third quarter, they strike first. 14 and a half to, excuse me, 14 10 to go. The Chiefs on top by five. Well, as you've reported earlier, Flanagan is the best athlete on. Uh, on Springfield College, and it's rare for a defenseman to score, so uh, uh, Flanagan enjoying himself a heck of a day here, shutting down Bessio, keeping him scoreless, and Keith comes down and un unmolested all the way down into the mouth of the goal cage and bounces one as we get a good look at it right here, and Tuttle go goes down low for it, but doesn't come back up with it. So Tuttle once again, no answer, as Flanagan sneaks it in, so again, Terrio controls the draw, he finds Felt, and now Felt moves in. Felt goes passing to Anastas in front. Anastas can't find it, but Smith now to Polisi, and that's picked off by Goodrich. Nice play by Eugene Goodrich with a nice move to elude his man, and Goodrich brings it all the way down. Eugene Goodrich with some quick legs. He moves into the offensive zone, finds Bessio in the corner. Bessio watched closely by Flanagan. Flanagan doing a job on Bessio so far today. Bessio goes around the cage, tries to elude Flanagan. Flanagan still on him with the long stick. Bessio gets a shot between the legs of Quirk, and that's gonna put a, a point on the board for the Bears. 10 to six now in favor of Springfield. That time Bessio really didn't beat Flanagan, but he got around him enough to sneak it through Quirk's legs, Tom. Yeah, he set him up. He came right hard, and when he put on the brakes, came around, he got that little sliver and got his overhand, left-handed bounce shot right in between the legs of Quirk. Here we see Bessio. Watch this pivot right here, and he gets the stick up high. Right there, over the stick of Flanagan. Nice right job down by low. Flanagan, but like you said, Bessio got just enough of a look to get it through Quirk. So now 10-6, to six, two quick strikes by both squads here to start the third quarter of action. 13 and a half minutes to go. As once again, Mule wins another draw. That's his second control off the faceoff so far in this second half. O'Brien, he controls for the Bears as they bring it down. He's got Veta to his right. He falls down and finds Terrence. And now Terrence moves behind the cage. He's pressured by two. He has Bessio to his right. Terrence still controls. It's poked at by Caddy. Caddy gives Terrence some room, and he finds Doyen, who's in with the separated right shoulder once again to start the third. Twelve and a half to go. And, and New York Tech wasn't even aware that they didn't even have enough guys on the field. Here comes McManus now replacing uh, Joe Martinez. So now nine on nine. Again, Goodrich at the top. Nice defense that time by 
Ontario, but a whistle, and that'll be an arrow against the Bears, so the Chiefs will control. Yeah, a crease violation. That was on call for there as Dorian put his foot into the crease trying to get position inside. So a 10 to 6 lead. Chiefs remain up by four. We're early here in the third quarter. Brian Evie along with Tom Judge on the CW Post Campus here in Brookville. NC2A Division Championship. And now Bob Felt will move it in for the Chiefs. He comes to the near side. He's chased out by McManus. And again, the Chiefs set up, slowing it down, moving the ball around the cage, trying to get a good look. Savistano at the top. Watched by Goodrich, Savistano. He finds Jared Smith, who doesn't have a man on him. And now Polisi to Felt. Felt with the shot off the ground, and that one sneaks by Tuttle. 11 to 6 in favor of the Chiefs. Just over 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Good ball movement once again by Springfield. Yeah, Paul Polisi with the nice feed from behind the cage. What's so surprising about that goal, the way he was scored with such ease, is that New York Tech didn't even send a man behind the cage, so they had all their men in front of the cage there, having that zone, the three defense zone players across the front, and, and Bob Felt finding that at seam again and putting a left-handed shot right past Tuttle. So the Chiefs ahead now by five. Both New York Tech and the Chiefs have never won a Division II national championship. The closest New York Tech has ever gone to a championship has been 1980 when the basketball team got to the championship that eventually they lost that game to Virginia Union. So both of these teams in unfamiliar territory today. But the Chiefs prepared. They came prepared. They're up by five. Yeah, With 11.40 to go in the third, Tom. Tech's athletic director, Clyde Dowdy, was a, uh, a member of that 1980 NCAA Division II runners-up team. So the long clear by Arante. And now Torrey, the face-off specialist, moves it down as he has Vetter behind the cage. Bessio in the far corner. Now Vetter moves around again, and that one sneaks by Quirk on the ground. So nice job by Vetter going on the ground, making it 11-7 in favor of the Chiefs, Tom. Quick scoring here in the third quarter. Yeah, Vetter, Terrence Vetter coming from behind the cage. He shot that before his body was even in front of the cage there, taking advantage of the step that he earned with the spin move behind the cage on the left side. So New York Tech is finding out that if you go low, Quirk is vulnerable. That's what the Chiefs have been able to do today on Tuttle. Put the ball down on the ground. They lead by four over the Bears as once again, Mule and Terrio, Tom. Yeah, e even though the weather doesn't come into a, a factor today because a, a wet ball or a ball on a wet ground that is bounced will skip. E even a ball that is uh, bounced on dry ground will tend to skid because of the loose dirt right around where the goalies step. If you can see the, uh, the dirt mouths there when they show the cage again. Okay, so now the Chiefs will move in. Mark Terrio at the top finds a teammate to his left, but that shot is wide, and that goes over the end line. Chiefs will retain, however. Yeah, that's Chris LaVogue on the bounce shot, saved by Tuttle behind the cage. So now Dan Citrone sets up for the Chiefs. Shot by Police. That's deflected by Tuttle. Nice job by Tuttle that time as Police tried to go to the ground. Now the ball is loose. Arati... He shovels at it, he can't find the handle as Torrio, excuse me, Terrio tracks it down. Still loose, however, as Goodrich once again on the ground ball. Now Eugene moves it out over his line. Tries to clear, and they do. Mule far side moves in. Mule has Doyen. He, he, he goes to Veteran. Vetter sneaks it in, making it 11-8 in favor of the Chiefs. The Bears sneaking back in now, Tom. They brought the offensive weapons out of the clubhouse here in the second half. We'll see if they bring the defense with him to step up. Great job by Mueller. He knew he had the numbers, and all he had to do was be patient. He had about 10, 15-yard lead on uh, the Springfield guys coming in behind him. Peter Doyen played, um, you know, sort of dummy on the play by laying back, making believe that there was no uh, play. And then all of a sudden, Vetter came in, cutting on the deeper pattern behind and was wide open right on the crease. So five now for Gerard. Both teams coming out here in the third quarter, especially the Bears and... Putting the ball in the cage. Mule. Oh, he almost won the draw, but Terrio came away with it. So Mule, nice job that time. Keeping it away from Terrio, but it eventually got back to Mark. 
And so New, now, York New York Tech seems yes. to have come out with a lot more life in the second half, like you just mentioned. Perhaps Coach Kelly had a few choice words for, <coughs> excuse me, the New York Tech Bears there during halftime. So the Bears retain now, far side. That's Eugene Goodrich. Tries to move around a defender. He finds Trampus. And now McManus, finally Mule will move it in. Mule once again with the spin move, trying for six goals. He loses the handle and Jorgensen picks up for the Chiefs. And now Bessio, who's been very quiet today, on the, far, on the far corner for the Bears. He comes in, Bessio to the cage, and Bessio is on the board for the Bears, making it 11-9. We have a, we have a two goal advantage for the Chiefs with nine and a half to go in the third quarter, Tom. Yes, it looks like we got a barn burner uh, going here. And, and as Bessio beat three different Springfield defenders for that goal and subsequently got knocked into the cage. It shows him coming around the cage. Watch them all converge on Bessio here. And this quick shot, boom, gets it off. That is, that's the one step that Bessio was missing in the, in the first half. In the first half, he was getting knocked on his rear end before he got the shot and away. So an 11-9 score we have now with about three and a half minutes gone by in the third quarter. Well, we can't uh, hear what the referee was calling. There was a, a whistle and a flag on the play as Bessio was checked into the crease from behind by one of the Springfield players. He couldn't get the guy's number from the, the replay angle, but perhaps there is a penalty on the play as yeah, we see. That's, uh, Tim Tuttle with Mark Anastas just outside the crease. So it's Springfield's ball, but man up for New York Tech. That's right, it's Bob Felt controlling for well, the Chiefs. He has Savistano to his left. So New York Tech has to keep them from getting into the restraining box, at which point they will release the player. We got timeout by Springfield as they're gonna try to set up this play because they need this player released from the box in order for New York Tech not to be a man up. So the Chiefs that time ran a quick play, called the timeout once they saw how the Bears would defend, and they called the timeout. So it's 11 to nine with nine and a half to go in the third quarter. As During this timeout, why don't we throw it down to... Okay, we're just gonna get a look at the, uh, the crowd behind Springfield's bench there. As we have timeout on the field, a couple of uh, banners, the one on the left, Celebrating Terrio. Wait for the teams to come out of this timeout. As we have a beautiful spring day here on uh, May 14th. A couple of clouds in the sky, but they're just little whispers. A nice little breeze going on. And we have a lot of the fans in the stands with their shirts off. So the Bears, Tom, have made it very exciting now in the third quarter. They only trail by two. With nine and a half to go in this third quarter. I Bob felt will control for the Chiefs, Tom. I feel a sense of excitement building up in the stadium, too, as the fans are starting to get into it with those two New York Tech quick scores. That's right. We're happy you could join us this afternoon for this Division II NCAA championship game. That's lost out of bounds by the Chiefs and the Bears. And Robert Arante will control. Nice job by the Bears turning away the Chiefs. A little razzle-dazzle there by, the, by uh, Felt and uh, the Springfield coach, uh, Keith Bugby, pulling Felt back and sending Flanagan down the sideline long. But uh, New York Tech was uh, hip to the plan and was right there to defend it. New York Tech's ball going the other way. Okay, so Goodrich now. He'll work it with Bessio. And Vetter, Mule, Doyen, and McManus on the offense for the Bears. Bessio goes to the corner. And Vetter has up top. Control. Now Karanikis and Vetter. Now Mule with the shot. That goes way over the crossbar. So Bessio will track it down over the end line, Tom. But that's a good shot for Mule there. He scored a couple times with those high shots, and there's still 29 seconds left on the man up situation for Tech. So now Bessio, McManus, now Vetter. He'll go to the ground. That one jumped. That one skips over Quirk again over the end line. So that'll stop the clock. 8.52, 21 seconds to go in the advantage. And New York Tech taking no chances with. Uh, 
point men behind both sides of the cage there, so they're getting possession after sh they should just shoot at will right here. Again, Vetter, Karanikis, now Doyen on it. Can't find the handle, the ball's still loose. It's tracked down by the defense of the Chiefs. Jorgensen, finally Bessio comes up with it. One second left in the advantage, however. Eight and a half in the third corner, 11-9 lead. <laughs> That's a big B, Tom. Yeah, the signs of spring are here, right? Uh, Get that thing out of here. There here. we go. Almost Eight and a half to go in the third quarter. You all right, Tom? Yeah, attack of the killer bees. They're coming up from Mexico. Forgot to bring our bug spray this <laughs> afternoon with us to the CW Post campus here in Brookville. So nice job by the defense of the Chiefs. The Bears got two shots off, but one skipping over the net and one going over the net, the one by Mule, so... Still 11-9 in favor of the Chiefs as they move down. Jared Smith to the right of Tuttle. That's a soft shot. Tuttle can grab it, and he clears to Arante with the long stick. Comes over the midline. He's chased by Daly. Nice job by Daly catching up to Arante. Now Doyen dumps off to Bessio, but it's loose. Bessio with the ground ball on it. He's pressured by Arnold. Bessio slowing it down. He has Hutchinson now in. He'll go off. And Doyen, Arante, he'll go back on D. McManus in low. Bessio takes his seat, gets the shot off, however, but a whistle, it's going to be against the Chiefs as Bessio takes his seat on the grass, Tom. Yeah, Bessio's working hard this half. And, and, and that's exactly what Bessio's hard work, once he gets inside, he creates penalties for the other team and opportunities for New York Tech. Um, Doyen, I, I, don't, I don't know what, what advantage it has in, in him being in there now. He can't pass the ball. So New York Tech is missing that center crease. Okay, so Jorgensen now. He'll come down. Police right in front to Anastas. Broken up by Tuttle. That one just wide of Tuttle. So whistle, stopping action. A lot of action that time. Just outside the crease of Tim Tuttle. See Anastas with O'Brien on the offense. O'Brien. T T Tuttle tried to bring the ball back into the crease, which is not allowed in that period as he had come out. Excuse okay, so me. That's what the call is in and out of the crease, right? That's why the possession goes back over to Springfield. Okay, so they control Savistano now at the top with Felt, Anastas, Jared Smith, and Paul Police on the offense for the Chiefs. Now Felt picking up speed, moving in, finds Police. Now Police with O'Brien on him. Police moves around. O'Brien beats O'Brien that time. Police moves in. The shot. Grabbed by Tuttle. Nice job by Tuttle as Police got the shot off just in time, but Tuttle was able to grab it. And now that, Martinez, Tom. And that's Tuttle's forte, getting that long outlet pass off a, uh, a save. Yeah, he's an outstanding clear. A good call, Tom. Now Martinez on the far side with Goodrich. And now Goodrich setting up with Doyen just in front of him. He's got Bessio out there with him. And now here comes Vetter around the cage. Quirk sets up. Vetter pressures. A lot of pressure from Caddy. And now Bessio controls behind the net. Bessio moves around. He's watched by Flanagan. Here comes Mike. Goes back around on the sweep. Vetter, Doyen, Karanikis. Goodrich and Mule out for the Bears along with Bessio on the offense. And now Goodrich picks up a head of steam and comes in, goes off the ground, but over Quirk and over the end line. So Vetter will track it down and bring it over with 5.42 to go in the third quarter. 11-9 lead for the Chiefs, Tom. Terrence Vetter. We mentioned those ground balls, those 141 ground balls shattering the previous record of 85 for New York Tech. Once again on the ground by Vetter, that one wide, and that's going to skip out of bounds as Goodrich gives chase. Yeah, <clears throat> not only uh, did um, Goodrich break the record for the ground balls gained in a year, also Peter Doyen tied a record for most goals in a game, which was nine set last year. and Also, also assists, right, Tom? Uh, Terrence Vetter had 10, right. all, all against the poor uh, opponent, uh, New Haven. And there we go, see the graphic team, there. Outstanding, that 211 goals by the Bears. Just an outstanding offensive squad. 
Coach Kelly has assembled in only two years. We mentioned his record, 20 and three, as they're on the attack again. Doyen this time, That's that time it's stripped by Jorgensen. Nice play. Ball is loose, however, Mule in. And Jorgensen is able to scoot it out for the Chiefs. Picks up the ground ball. He takes a hit from Mule, but now far side. Chiefs control. Jared Smith on another grounder for the Chiefs. Picking up the loose balls. Four and a half to go in the third. Chiefs up by two. They thwarted that last possession by the Bears, and now they're back on the attack. Dan Citrone. Jared Smith, Mark Terrio, Mark Anastas, and Paul Police on the offense for the Chiefs. And this is another reason why the Chiefs uh, have such a low scoring uh, defense against them is that their offense passes it around a lot, wasting a lot of time too, as we have Kevin O'Brien on the steal. That was a nice job by O'Brien stripping LaVogue on the defense. So O'Brien will go back, and now Mule up front brings it over the line. Mule around on LaVogue. Mule in front to the cage, just over the crossbar once again, Tom. Going high, trying to sneak it by Quirk. That time too high and over the restraint, over the end line. Yeah, we could see from our angle up here perfectly. As soon as Mule made that uh, that sprint, he broke even and then turned the corner very quickly. And now Bessio behind the back. That's a nice save by Quirk. The ball loose and a whistle as Mule hits the ground. Back yeah. to your point, Tom. Um, Mule, when he went around the cage, as soon as he got even with the defender, switched and ducked under with his stick and came up with the right hand for that shot there. And then Bessio coming around the corner, put it around his back. Uh, here we see Mule getting around the corner, switches to his right hand and just over the top. Good shot on that, guys. Okay, so possession remains in the Bears' end. That's Goodrich on the sweep. Excuse me, Vetter. And now Bessio in the corner, tracks down. Three and a half to go, 11-9 lead. For the Chiefs, Bessio goes in. Bessio still on the move. Tries to elude Jorgensen. Nice play, however. Bessio gets the shot off, and he puts it in. And a flag on the play. That time a hold. It's against the Chiefs, so that will count. Making the score 11-10. 3.25 to go in the third. Bessio with his second goal, putting his team now down by one. Yeah, that, uh, excuse me, uh, Brian, that's... Bessio's third That's goal. Bessio's number two. As you see him, he's going to duck underneath here, and this is where he's going to draw the foul on that hold right there. That's the third time Bessio's used that move. This time there's nobody else on Springfield to help out Flanagan, so Bessio is uh, taking control here of the New York Tech offense, going one-on-one -on -one against uh, the All-American Keith Flanagan, who bested him on one play early in the second half. But now Bessio has three unassisted goals here in this third quarter, and he's sparking a new life into New York Tech as they trail by just one. That's right, and now the Chiefs lead is in jeopardy as Mule wins the draw against Terrio. He moves in, he's stripped by Flanagan. The ball loose, however. Veteran for the Bears, and Vetter comes away with it. He's watched by Cad. He goes behind the cage. Vetter has Doyen with him. Mule, Trampas, and Goodrich. Goodrich will go off. And now Doyen, far side. He'll roll it on the ground to Bessio. As Bessio comes over the line, he picks up speed and he comes in. Bessio on the move to the cage to shot on the ground. That's deflected by Quirk. Nice job by Quirk. Caddy on the loose ball. Can't find the handle. And now Flanagan gets it, but he loses the handle. Finally, Flanagan with the long stick picks up the ground ball and he outlets to Terrio. Terrio now downfield. He's got three teammates with him. Terrio goes all the way down. He finds Police. Police to Smith. Smith's shot is deflected. That goes over the end line. The Chiefs will retain with 2.19 to go. 11-10, the Chiefs lead. Yeah, that fast break uh, led by Terrio there. He had a full 35-yard advantage, so he could have taken as much time as he wanted. Springfield came up with a good shot, just a little bit high off the top of the pipe. Or Tuttle Stick got up there. I couldn't really tell at the speed of the shot but they had plenty of time to uh, get that shot off there. So just over two minutes to go in the third. The Chiefs back on the attack. That shot deflected by Tuttle. Nice job. And now the Chiefs, Dan Daly tracks down. Dan, number 12, goes across to Savistano. That's deflected right in front by Goodrich. Nice job by Goodrich blocking that shot as a flag comes in on the near side, stopping the action with 1.55 to go. We wait and get word. Looks like it's against the Bears, Tom, no? 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the call was because I saw Brian Trampas level a, um, a would-be shooter before the shot got up. Maybe he brought his elbow up too high. Maybe that was the indication as the referee turned his back to me. Get a look Here we right go. Now, we see huh? Brian Trampas, number 36. Bull, oh, yeah, check to the head. That's you can't do that. The elbow to the head is the call. So one minute now for the Chiefs with a big opportunity to go up again by two. That's Dan Citrone. Can't find the handle behind the cage. Goes over the line, and the Bears retain the possession. Our 11-10, they trail by one, 1.43 to go in the third. Action, mu action is much quicker here in the third quarter. And now Goodrich comes down, takes a shot by police, but he continues to control. He finds McManus. McManus, a nice move around Jorgensen. McManus to the cage around the neck, around the back. Nothing going on as it skips over the end line. Vetter is there. Nice move by McManus that time. Yeah, Tom certainly was. His man. Good recognition. You're absolutely right, Brian. As soon as he saw his man and overcommitted, he reacted the other way and spun with his left hand. Quite a move by Dennis McManus showing ambidexterity there. So now Vetter will slow things down, setting up just under a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. They trail by one, do the Bears. Terrence Vetter backing his man in, but he's pushed out by Caddy. Caddy now poking him with the stick. And another whistle as a glove is down on the field. That's... Uh, Terrence's glove, he picks it up, puts it on, and will reset with the Bears controlling. So if we, if we, if we can draw a conclusion, if your shoelace is untied, you don't get timeout. <laughs> but if your glove comes off, you do get a timeout from the official. Okay, we need a clarification on that. Okay. But now we know. <laughs> All right, so now uh -huh. the ball in the hands of Terrence Vetter once again. He comes in, tries to find Doyen, but Doyen that time slow to the ball, so it goes over the... Line on the far side, and that'll give Chiefs the ball. Doyne a little bit slow with the shoulder, maybe. Yeah. Right handed shooter, right handed separated shoulder. So we'll see how that affects the Bears and Doyne's performance in the fourth quarter. We have 54 seconds to go in the third. Okay, with, with that last statement, Brian, all of a sudden here comes Richard Stout, who is a freshman who is a backup to Doyne. Maybe Pete Doyne has seen the last of his action for the day because. Uh, That's right. It looks like he was hurt on that. Attempt to grab that pass from Vetter. And, and so we'll he, see. And he has been tentative all day. You are absolutely right. Although a big heart, he did want to play as, you know, as much as he could, as hard as he could. But uh, there are certain levels of pain. Okay, so now Savistano with the spin move. Felt in front, can't find the handle. Now it comes out to Bromby, but over the line. That's going to be Bears' ball. New York Tech's defense has been so much more alive. They're on top of everybody. They're getting to their man, and, and uh, Springfield isn't allowed to just stand around with the ball, passing it amongst themselves. And that so was New great York hustle by Goodrich too, Tom. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's all part of it. That's what it takes. So with 20 seconds to go here in the third. As we get a look at Arante walking the ball up for Tech. The Chiefs lead by one. As you see NCAA written on the grass. It's a Division II championship game. Now Trampas will move in with the long stick. Finds Karanikis. Karanikis has been quiet today, usually a high score. Another whistle stopping the, uh, that's it. Time has expired in the third. I lost track of the time. That'll do it after three, 11-10, the Chiefs lead. This game is being telecast on the rights granted by the NCAA. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the NCAA and New York Tech is prohibited. All announcers, production, and technical personnel used on this broadcast are students of New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury. And you get a look at our score and some of our happy fans as their team has climbed back into this contest. They trail by only one beautiful day. As Tom said, no clouds as we see the salute sign. <laughs> okay, and uh, just a quick rundown of the scoring for that uh, quarter. Flanagan scored for Springfield, making it a 10-5 lead. That was an unassisted goal and a rarity, and the defenseman scored it. And then Bessio scored his first goal of the day for New York Tech, unassisted, to make it 10-6. Bob Felt came back on a great feed from Paul Polisi to make it 11-6 in a man-down situation. Oh, no, excuse me, that was not a man-down situation. Um, for New York Tech. Um, Vetter then came back unassisted for Tech, making 11 7. Uh, Vetter scored, scored again, this time on an assist from Muley as uh, Tech came down on a fast break, 11 8, and had two consecutive unassisted goals by 
Mike Bessio has brought the score to 11-10. So if you go period by period, Tech was down 5-1 after one. Then they uh, were still down by four at the end of uh, the first half of play, 9-5. So they kind of found their offense. But in that quarter, they won 5-2. And they're starting to, they, they more than have started, they have definitely creeped back into this game here. And I believe they have found the philosophy that's going to work for them. That's right. And oddly enough, Tom, seems like 10 has been the magic number for Springfield all season long. They lost two games, and in both those games, they gave up 14 goals. They gave up 10 in only one more game. They managed to win that game. But 10 is the magic number for the Springfield D. If they can hold their opponents under 10, they seem to be successful. So now Terrio controls the draw. He moves in. Jared Smith behind the cage. Trampus hounds him. Knocks it loose. Nice job by Trampus. And now Goodrich again on the loose ball. Far side. He comes out. Goes across the field. Finds Bessio. Bessio can't pick up the initial ground ball. And it's still loose. And Bessio and Mule in on the fight for the ground ball. Vetter comes away with it. I think we're going to have an outstanding uh, quarter of action here at the NCAA Division II Championship game as uh, these two teams are fired up. That's right. It's, it just, just has that feeling. That shot deflected. Nice shot by McManus, but a nice save by Quirk. So now they'll clear Troy Graham near side. That's right. The excitement is building now with 14 minutes to go in the final quarter. 11-10, the Chiefs lead. They move in. Bob Felt on the ground. Nice save by Tuttle right in the breadbasket. And now O'Brien with the long stick on the far side. He'll try to clear. He's a great clearing defenseman. Looks like he wants a man across the field. He finds him. That's Arante with another long stick, another defenseman. Arante will move it over the line. He's got Vetter behind the cage, as usual. Terrence right there. And he loses it. And it goes out of bounds. And it is the Bears' ball as Vetter will bring it in. He has Bessio right there with him. Bessio will bring it in. He'll use it and go to Vetter with 13.33 to go. Final quarter. Again, the Chiefs up by a slim margin. One goal. As Tom said, the Bears, they brought the offensive weapons out in the second half. The third quarter, they win the quarter 5-2, and it's now 11-10. Bessio behind the cage, moves in. He's pressured by Flanagan. Again, Bessio can't elude Flanagan, but he gets in, however, Flags from all directions, and that's going to be a flag against Flanagan, I believe. As Bessio once again took a seat on the grass. That stops the clock. 13-15 to go in the fourth quarter. 11-10 lead for the Chiefs, so Flanagan will go off along with Liam Sullivan, number 18. Yeah, uh, Mike Bessio, this is the third penalty he has drawn against Springfield in, in the second half alone as we get a look at the at tail end of the play as Bessio is getting knocked from behind. That's right, you see Flanagan with the stick up asking the official why me, but Flanagan obviously pushing Bessio down just outside the crease, so Bears retain Bessio. He'll set things up for his teammates. He's got Karanikis. Doyen back in, Tom, for the Bears. Mule, that shot by McManus, that's deflected by Quirk nicely, so Quirk Tries to clear and he does. He gets it far side to Klopaki. And that's moved down to Caddy. Now Caddy moves it in. Here comes Caddy. He finds Smith. Smith deflected off a of tunnel stick and over the crossbar. So that went over the end line and Anastas will chase it for the Chiefs. He'll bring it in. Oh, that was a great scoring opportunity for Springfield right there. They had all the time in the world, and they rushed the shot, and they took a crank low shot instead of taking a high one and bounce it. Jared Smith, that was. Okay, so Chiefs once again. Bob Felt, who's been quiet in the second half on for the Chiefs. He goes across to Savastano, who had the five goals in the first game. Nick moving in. He's pressured by McManus. Nice job by Dennis. And now Karanikis, who's also been quiet for the Bears, pressures Smith, and now Felt... We'll get a hand in the action once again. He's watched by Martinez, who just checked into the game. Felt will go back to Citrone, who's up top and watched by O'Brien. Citrone goes over the line and now back in. Finds Savistano to Anastas. Quick shot. Again, Felt. That comes out to Felt. And Felt puts it in, putting the Chiefs back up by two. Just over 12 to play, Tom. Yeah, and a fortunate bounce uh, for New York Tech there, and a fortunate one for Springfield. As, uh, 
And Astis's quick stick right in front of the cage was stopped by Tuttle. Uh, Feltz rebound uh, with one hand. He put it over Tuttle's stick right there. Okay, here we get a look. Three players touch the stick at the last player, Bob Felt, putting it in and putting his squad up by two. So the captain, just as I said, he was quiet here in the second half, puts one in. And now the Chiefs with Terrio once again control. Mark Terrio, number 11, with the top. And the Chiefs quickly move in. That's loose, picked up by Goodrich. Who else but Eugene Goodrich picking up the ground ball. That'll stop the clock, however, as if there's a whistle. It's against Springfield, so the Bears will retain. Tom, why don't we throw it down to Rich D'Elia, who has a scoop on Tech's outstanding comeback here in the second half. Take it away, Rich. We saw Springfield quickly on the attack. They put another one in. Now up by three, Tom. Yeah, Paul Polisi was right on the left-hand point of the crease there, wide open. And uh, he had all the time in the world to get it past Tuttle. There was absolutely no help at all. Tuttle's signaling right now towards the bench for, so for something. Uh, we can't exactly determine out what it is as we get a look at there. Polisi had all the time in the world, wide open there on the crease. So now once again, a little bit more room between the Bears and the Chiefs as the Chiefs again up by three. 229 of the fourth, that score coming from. We apologize for the technical difficulties. If you just returned, it's just under 10 minutes to go. 13 to 10 lead for the Chiefs, and the Bears on the move. Now Vetter can't find that one as it skips over the end line, and the possession arrow will go Springfield's way. Eugene Goodrich trying to hit better behind the cage there on a long pass. It was a good idea, just a little bit out of reach for Vetter. What a, what a way to play a championship game, Tom. If you, if you could write down and script this game, you could write it no, no, no better way. It's been highly contested here in the second half by both squads. It's still a ball game, 13 to 10. Bears still in this game as Goodrich comes in. He's pressured by Savistano, makes a spin move. Savistano's still on him. He takes a hit, goes down, no whistle. Bessio, the ball is loose. He can't find the handle. And Savistano comes away. He finds Felt on the outlet. Felt now breaking down. He has Daly to his left. He goes up front to Jared Smith, who takes a hit. No call. That hit by Trampus, obviously clean. Nice job by Trampus. And Tech takes over as it goes over the end line. Yeah, now Tech has nine minutes left to get up three goals. But Tech has fallen back into that pattern of holding on to the ball just a little bit longer than they should. Uh, I'm talking about each one of the offensive guys. they got to create something for somebody else. That's right. It looks like they had grabbed the momentum late in the third quarter, but now Springfield taking it right back here to start the fourth. We have just on the nine to play as Bessio moves in. He's watched again by Flanagan. That shot deflected by Quirk to the left. And the ball is loose as McManus is on for the Bears. Still loose. Bessio in. Mule and Doyen. And a whistle stopping the action. Yeah, we got a push on uh, Springfield, pushing Nick Torre into uh, the cage there. So New York Tech will retain possession once again. Bessio on his last move when he spun and came to the middle, didn't get the ball back on the ground. Shot it right into Quirk's chest. That was not even a save. He, Quirk couldn't have gotten out of the way if he wanted to of that one. Bessio's got to get back on the ground. Here we go. Okay, we'll see what they do with Vetter, Bessio, Torre, Mule, Doyen, and McManus on. Bessio, that shot. A crease violation apparently, so that'll turn it over to Springfield with just under eight and a half minutes to go. The Chiefs lead by three. They're holding on as Flanagan will bring it up the near side. He's watched by Bessio. That's been, an, that's been a great matchup to watch. It, looks, it seems like Flanagan won the first half matchup and Bessio's gotten his licks in here in the second half. But this game not over yet. We have eight minutes to play. Bears trail by three now. The Chiefs control as Mark Anastas moves in. He's watched by O'Brien. Anastas slowing things down. He goes to Felt up top. Bob loses it. Ball's still loose. And Bob's going to lose the handle. The ground ball eventually still kicked around. Picked up by Flanagan. Flanagan takes the seat again. A hit by Trampus who's playing rough. And now a break. And the shot. And the score by Vetter as 
Quirk falls down in the crease and Vetter scores on the breakaway, making it 13-11 in favor of the Chiefs. 7.42 to play, Tom. Yeah, New York Tech needed that break. As we see right outside, Vetter taking it in with the, the high deke and then coming down low as Quirk makes a guy in effort. But Vetter was up to the task and, and uh, the quick deke around uh, the head and then down low with the shot. Classic so, shot by Terrence That's Vetter. right, so Vetter beating the defense. That loose ball kicked around in the neutral area for a while. Trampas laying a hit on Flanagan, no call made, and Vetter quickly ran into the offensive zone, scooped it up, and put the shot past Quirk. So Springfield leads by two. Timeout called by the Bears as we have 7.42 to play time in the fourth quarter. Okay, Brian Evy and Tom Judge here with you at the CW Post Campus, Long Island University. Again, the Chiefs lead by two, 13-11. We have 7.15 to play here in the fourth quarter. The Bears on the attack. Robert Arante, near side, moves in with the long stick. He goes around the cage. He has Vetter, Bessio, McManus, Mule, and Doyen out there with the separated shoulder. That one goes off quirk and over the end line, so... The Bears will retain, Tom. Yeah, nobody picked up Arante when he came down. So as a defenseman, he, you know, he's got to make a choice. And he made the choice to take a shot on goal. Wasn't a bad idea with Bessio behind the cage. Okay, Tech so time possession. running out for the Bears, Tom. We have under seven minutes to play. They trail by two. The fans cheering him on, trying to motivate them. Bessio moves in toward the cage. Again, he's pressured by Flanagan. Keith Flanagan doing a great job today. Bessio gets it off, however, and scores, making it 13-12 to 12 in favor of Springfield. We have six and a half to play. Mike Bessio that time beating Flanagan for the first time clearly this afternoon. Yeah, that's his fourth unassisted goal of the second half. The first one of the fourth quarter here, and it couldn't have come at a more, opportunity to, a more opportune time. Here we see it again. Goalie Quirk came out of the cage for there, but look at the defenseman. That time just beat him right there around the around the yeah, perfect uh, pivot that time. And, and Flanagan didn't have help coming around as the two uh, Springfield defensemen had their back to the play and weren't in position to help with Bessio. So Terrio once again winning these faceoffs. Mule continues to pressure him, however, near side and a whistle as Mule pushed Mark down onto the turf. So Terrio will get the ball, and the Chiefs control. Terrio goes all the way across. He has Savistano now, who will set things up on the offense. The Chiefs lead by one. We have six minutes to play in the fourth quarter of this Division II National Championship game. Brian Evie along with Tom Judge at the CW Post Campus here on Long Island University in Brookville. The Chiefs continue to apply the pressure to the Bears here in the fourth quarter, but on the other side, the Bears do the same to Sean Quirk. That time, the Chiefs lose the handle, and the Bears will take over. Yeah, uh, Springfield's starting to play a little tentative now, making mistakes, unforced errors. That's just letting New York Tech stay right in this game and presenting them with the opportunity for victory here. We see Arante walking the ball up to midfield. Okay, and Tuttle now all the way out. As we know, an outstanding clearing goalie. Does fine work with the stick. He has Arante now near side. Arante with McManus now. McManus on the sweep all the way around. He's got Bessio out there. McManus now toward the cage. He backs off. Bears make quick changes. Torrey goes back on D. And now Doyen. Doyen moves in. The shot just wide of Quirk, and that'll sneak over the line. Doyen once again down on the dirt. An obvious pain using his stick to help him get up off the ground. So Doyen using the stick as a crutch. Yeah, but uh, Doyen also fell into the crease there, so that's why New York Tech didn't retain possession after that shot there. So it's cleared by Quirk all the way down. Nice clear as Anastas is on. He's pressured, however. 
by Tuttle, who's all the way out. They have Arate's the numbers. in the goal. Arate in the goal. Savistano on. Jared Smith, the shot past Arate, and the score. Once again, the Chiefs up by two. That time they beat Robert Arate. Tim Tuttle all the way out by the line. Robert Arate went in to defend, and he was beat by Smith. 4.54 to go. The Chiefs again up by two. Yeah, New York Tech uh, got caught on that long outlet pass. We see Savistano here with Smith all alone. Defense coming in behind Tuttle, but to no avail a little bit late. But the actual play happened on that long clearing pass. Uh, New York Tech sent three guys after the ball, and Anastas came away with it, leading to a fast break for Springfield as they had the numbers. So once again, these faceoffs, as the game progresses, get more and more critical. Mule again, losing to Terrio. Terrio, far side. He moves in. He eludes defenders, gets it off. And the shot by Anastas goes in. And now the Chiefs up by three. They lead 15 to 12. Just over four and a half minutes to play, Tom. Great stick work by Anastas as he's in the middle of the field. He got checked a couple of times. Yeah, and off the great field by Terrio, too. Terrio uh, hit Anastas right in the middle of the, uh, the crease there. And once he was checked a couple of times, Anastas had to look into his stick to see if it was, as we see right here, he gets checked a couple of times, sees that he still has it, and says, oh, I think I'll shoot, and beats Tuttle. So... Terrio setting up that play for Anastas. Once again, we get a look at the crowd rooting on their Bears. Very spirited crowd here at CW Post Campus. Their Bears, however, trail 15 to three. The Bears are the whole squad in today's championship game. Obviously, New York Tech is right next door on, right next door to CW Post, but on the offensive end now, Bessio and O'Brien lose the handle and there's a whistle as Flanagan and Bessio got into a little bit of a uh, shouting match that time on the field. So the Bears retain. It'll be Bessio again with Flanagan on him. They're going to go to isolation against Bessio and have him cutters come off a screen or two. We'll see how that works for the Chiefs D as Bessio once again is dumped by Flanagan into the crease and a flag comes. That's going to be against Flanagan. So the Bears will be up a man for 30 seconds. It's 4 9 to play in the final quarter. Bears trail by 3, 15 to 12. Springfield continually applying pressure to the Bears. Every time it seems like they sneak back in, Springfield puts themselves up by two or three goals. So keeping enough distance between themselves and the Bears, the Chiefs doing a fine job this afternoon, Tom. Absolutely. Uh, Springfield uh, dug a hole for New York Tech by going ahead 5-1 early on, and Tech hasn't climbed back out of that hole. But that's the fourth time Bessio has drawn a penalty against a Springfield player in the second half here. Okay, so now four crucial minutes left for the Bears. Karanikis, that one wide. As Karanikis came with the side with the sidearm shot here, instead of coming overhand, he was able to get checked. You see Coach Kelly, he has on the four minutes to score four goals and put his team up and win a national championship. Now Vetter, Karanikis, that one's stripped by Caddy and now it's loose. Karanikis gives chase along with Jorgensen for the Chiefs. It's still loose. Jorgensen on and Vetter picks it up, but no. Comes out to Karanikis, and now Ian, he'll move it over the line and in for the Bears. And now Vetter, back to Mule. Mule, the shot grabbed out of the air by Quirk, so nice job by Quirk. Mule staying in the air, Quirk snatching that. 3.18 to play, 15 to 12 lead for the Chiefs. Again, a long clear, and it comes down just in front of Anastas as he takes a hit by O'Brien. That skips over the line. It'll be tech ball, Tom. Yeah, uh, Quirk just, cheap, just cheaped it down the field. They're just trying to run out the clock there. It's going to take an extra 20 seconds or so for Tech to come back up in the offensive end. So the Bears move all the way up as Tuttle clears another whistle. That's an offsides against the Bears. So Springfield will... Pick oh. up the ball as the Bears. What a mental mistake. Dude, that I was mean, an unforced error. This is unbelievable that, now. That, that hurts a, a lot there. There's just no reason for that. With two, with just under three minutes to play at offsides. So that'll take more time off the clock for the Bears, giving Springfield yet another opportunity as Mark Anastas moves in. He fakes a shot, goes to Jared Smith, but Smith can't grab the ball, and it skips out over the line. So now actually nice save made by Savistano, keeping it in. 
But the Bears are there as Hutchinson. And now the ball is loose. And now Eugene Goodrich will pick it up once again. Coming in, Eugene. He goes to his left to find Vetter. Vetter to Doyen. Doyen can't grab it. Doyen having problems with the stick today. Every time he wants to put his stick up, it seems like he's got it. He's having problems with his shoulder. So the Chiefs take over. 2.15 to play. They, they lead by three. They, that clear by Quirk. Nice. Comes out to Anastas. And now he moves over the line. Bears, Bears get back quickly. But Anastas will slow things down, Tom. Yeah, uh, Springfield, time for them to take some uh, time off this clock. Ooh, Jared Smith takes a hit, no call. And that one's swiped away by Arante. So Arante, he'll bring it down. Ooh, nice play made by Police, no call, almost stripping the ball. But Arante holds on. Just under two minutes to go for the Bears. They need three to tie. Here comes Arante. He's watched by Daly. Arante backs off. He finds Vetter. Vetter the shot again. A nice save by Quirk. And Quirk. We'll look to clear. Quirk continues to shut the door on the Bears here in the closing minutes of this NCAA Division II National Championship game. Springfield up by three. They move back in on the offense. Savistano pressured by two. Bears and the whistle going against the Bears, and that'll turn it over. Excuse me, going against the Chiefs. That'll turn it over to the Bears yeah, and a timeout. That's it. No, no timeout, just a turnover with 122 to go, Tom. The Time, Bears need three to tie. The timeout is on the field oh, for New York timeout. Tech. <laughs> That's what the uh, referee was calling there. 122 left. Uh, New York Tech is down by three. As Springfield has come on once again on goals by Anastas and um, Smith after Bessio had tied it up 13-12. Okay, Tom. Desperation time now for the Bears with a lot of seniors on this squad and the possibility of Mike Bessio transferring. This could be their only shot with this squad to win a championship. They have about a minute and a half to do it. They need three goals to tie. They trail 15 to 12. We'll see what happens as we get a look at this replay. Vetter with the shot. That's the last save by Quirk. A nice save as Vetter went to the ground. That's been successful for the Bears as well as the Chiefs this afternoon. But that time, Quirk making the save. You see the fans, the Springfield section of the stands, rooting on their Chiefs for another minute and 22. They'll go back to New England with a national championship out of Division II. So 122 remaining. There's been, there's been plenty of outstanding players in this game, but with 122 to go, a tremendous impact can still be made on this game as the Bears trail by three. Tim Tuttle will bring it out for the home squad. He'll look to clear Arante on the wing. He finds Arante. Arante moves in with the stick. The shot off the ground wide. Vetter behind the net. He can't find the handle, and the Chiefs bring it back. One minute to play, Division II National Championship. The Chiefs are up by three time and time running out for the host Bears. The Chiefs bring it in, Jared Smith behind the cage. He's got police in front, Sullivan. Jared Smith takes a hit from Trampus who's been physical all day. Now it goes over the end line as O'Brien gives chase. And the Bears will look to clear, O'Brien does that. Finds Bessio over the midline, Bessio can't control. And it comes out to the Chiefs with 45 seconds to go, Tom. Yeah, New York Tech is uh, desperate here, to say the least. It looks like time's going to run out. Yeah, it looks like it's going to do it as Sullivan and Jared Smith move in. It's 30 seconds to go. Springfield will win their first ever Division II National Championship. Head coach Keith Bugby has assembled an outstanding squad of athletes. Another opportunity by Anastas turned away that time. Strong defense by Trampus. Nine seconds to go here, Tom. And the Springfield bench. Very excited as they have won a Division II National Championship. That'll do it, Tom. The 1994, as you hear our PA now, it's a National Championships out of Division II. The Springfield Chiefs have defeated the New York Tech Bears by a score of 15 to 12. New York Tech never did get out of that hole that was dug for them in the first period as uh, Springfield got off to that early 5-1 lead and held on. 
Let me recap the fourth quarter scoring we, uh, with uh, Vetter. Like Actually, let, let's let's just go to the uh, let's watch the camera here. That's we right. See. This, this speaks for itself. You see, Bessio might might have played his last game in a Bears uniform, and you see complete excitement on the other side. It'll be a happy trip home for this Springfield squad as they go home with the national championship trophy. You see, Springfield. They are the 1994 Division Two national championship. National champions. They have defeated the host Bears 15 to 12 here on the CW Post campus in Brookville. And it was a well earned victory. They controlled the tempo most of the game. Uh, New York Tech took over a little bit there in the middle two periods, but they came on strong at the end. Uh, they being Springfield to hold on to their lead. At okay, the Tom, it's kind of hard to pick a player of the game. Outstanding defense. Usually a defensive standout won't get that much attention. Bob Felt played a fine game, but I'm going to make a stand right now and say Mark Terrio on the faceoffs. That controlled the game for the Chiefs time and time again. Mark Terrio coming away with the ball, the loose balls, the faceoffs. With his unorthodox style, Mark Terrio has given his team a national championship as we see the dejected Bears with a word, an inspiring word, I would bet, from Coach Cayley and the, and the Chiefs. I mean... What else can you say? Let's just let the monitor do the talking. Yeah. You see the final score, 15 to 12. Jerry? The Chiefs have done the job. Jerry, play of the game would be, uh, Terry Touted as a team that does not score many goals, they come in here today and put 15 on the board against the host New York Tech squad. The Chiefs giving up 12 goals, and that's about five and a half goals over their average. But nonetheless, they'll go home with a national championship trophy and a happy ride home as the Chiefs celebrate on their side. We look at the Bears, very upset. Like I said, many seniors on this Bears team. They have five starters in their senior year, including Gerard Mule, face-off specialist, Terrence Vetter, Tim Tuttle, the goalie, Dennis McManus, also a senior, Robert Arante, defenseman, a senior, so the Bears, Losing an opportunity at a national at a national championship, we see the outstanding sportsmanship by the Bears congratulating the Chiefs. Must be a feel a, a great feeling for one Bob Felt, co-captain of uh, Springfield, as he had to sit out the first game uh, against New York Tech. He must sort of feel some sort of vindication as uh, New York Tech won that game 14 to nine, and then for have to have his team come back and win 15 12 you know you might feel like that goal swing is all because of him and uh, I believe his offense and his all-around play helped um, Springfield significantly he brought a new aura to the team because he made a couple of plays that were very outstanding early on in the game just to give his team that lift that they needed so once again congratulations to Bob Felt and all his teammates as they win the Division II National Championship, Bob Felt in his last game with the Chiefs, winning a national championship. See the fans who will wait around as the National Championship trophy will be given to the winning Chiefs. The Bears will stay on the field like good sportsmen. A member of the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Committee. First, the individual awards for the runner-up team, the Bears of the New York Institute of Technology. The awards for us for the runner-up Bears will be given out. Watch the graphic player of the game. Watch for number one, Eugene Goodrich. Oh, 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 oh. Number three. Eugene Goodrich, 
having an outstanding season for the Bears. Brian Cirillo, backup goaltender. And Tim Tuttle, of course, the outstanding goalie. He, he has played his last game for the Bears. Number five, Joseph Martinez is a freshman, so he'll be around a couple more years for Coach Kelly. Terrence Vetter, of course, the assist man for this Bears squad. Scott Hutchinson. He'll be back. Number 19, Sean Burns. Number 21, Kevin O'Brien. O'Brien had a fine game this afternoon, Number Tom, with the uh, good clearing. And then, of course, Michael Bessio. This has got to be tough for Mike Number to swallow. Number 24, Doug Fairley. Number 25, Nick Torrey. Number 39, Eric Petrullo. And number 39, Eric Petrullo. So that'll do it for the Bears as their roster has been completed. And now the Chiefs will be presented with their awards. Robert Simpson, Ed Crabb, Dean Kabakis, Stuart James, Clyde Doughty, and the coaches, Eric Rayo, Bob Cook, and head coach, Jack Kelly. Great job by Kelly, Tom. This is only his fourth defeat now in two years as head coach of the basket of the lacrosse squad here at New York Tech. Last season with an eight and three mark, and this year, yeah, 12 and 0 regular season, and now 12 and one. Disappointing, but a 20 and four mark nonetheless. Very impressive yeah, by Coach Kelly. He'll be around, and I'm sure he'll keep this program strong for the New York. Institute of Technology. Yeah, he feels he has a strong recruiting base in this Long Island region. He's made some awfully good contacts. And uh, he'll have his squad back to this championship game before long. Hopefully, New York Tech will be able to celebrate as Springfield will celebrate tonight. Number one, John DeRosia. Number two, Sean Quirk. Number three, Paul Polisi. Number four, Bob Self. Finishing an outstanding five, career in Springfield. Andy Seventh all-time on the Springfield scoring list is Bob Felt. So congratulations to Bob Felt once again. We found out why today, as he has outstanding stick work to go along with that lethal left-handed shot that victimized Tim Tuttle a couple of times today. Felt had four goals on the day. He had two of them in the first quarter. Keith Flanagan as well, Tom. Primary reason for today's victory. He kept Bessio quiet in the first half. Kept him limited in the second half. So Keith Flanagan doing a fine job. Number 12, Dan Daly. Number 13, Ron Kelly. Number 
number 15, Brad Jorgensen. Number 16, John Klopacki. Number 17, Troy Graham. Number 18, Leo Mustelovic. Number 19, Mike Kennedy. Number 20, Gary Gorbuki. Number 21, Mark Anastas. Number 22, Brian Law. Number 23, Dave Rubel. Number 25, Chris Bromby. Number 26, John Gambro. Number 28, Peter Brown. Number 29, Randy Fuller. Number 24, Darren Cady. Number 30, Mark McWilliams. Number 31, Nick Sabastano. Number 32, Mark Hill. Number 32, check that 33, Jamie Cole. Number 35, Chris McGee. And number 38, James Taylor. And the assistant coaches, Jim Nagel, Clark Kim, and Randy Frazier. And the head coach, Keith Buckley. the 1994 NCAA Division II Men's Lacrosse Championship Team Trophy are the Springfield Co-Captains, number four of our Team And there's a shot of Team Unity right there. As Felt and Flanagan call their teammates up to come and get a hand in on the the trophy representing the championship for 1994 NCAA Division II championship. We thank you for your attendance. Please drive home safely. Thank you. So, Brian, quite a victory for Keith Bugabee's team. Bugby, excuse me. That's right. Great job by Keith and his squad. Very happy for the Springfield Chiefs. As they go home, national champions of Division Two, and the fans will file out. And they did have a faithful following coming all the way down. As we get a look at our players of the game, Mark Terrio for the faceoff and yeah, the he... ground balls and all that, everything that he adds to his team. And Bob Felt, of course, leadership, goal scoring, ball movement, and for the simple fact that he wasn't in the first game, they lost that game by five. Bob's here today, his squad wins by three, and we're gonna have to give Bob Felt and Mark Terrio a co-player of the game honors. As, you know, once again, great job by both of these players and the entire Springfield squad, Tom. Yes, Terrio won 16 uh, face-offs and lost eight against uh, the two different New York Tech face-off uh, middies. And, and you can't say enough for how crucial that those face-offs are in the closing minutes of a game. I mean, if Tech won a few of those face-offs, who knows what would have happened. They might have had an opportunity at the cage. And, you know, this game could be the other way. Tech could have won this game by two or three goals, and they could be going home the victors today instead of the losers. So Mark Terrio, Bob Felt, the defense, and the coaching staff of Springfield, congratulations. Once again, the Division II NCAA 1994 champions. Yeah, in the, in the first quarter of the game, it was it was Felt's inspiration and leadership with his savvy on the on the field, as well as the two goals he scored in the first quarter that set the tone. And the first six faceoffs of the game went to Springfield as Terrio was just uh, very dominant. It, nothing against Gerard Mule, it's just that Terrio 
has uh, some uncanny ability. And uh, I'll send it over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. And it's been a pleasure working with you. And it's been a pleasure being associated with this NCAA right, Division II championship two game. Fine teams again. We want to thank you for joining us, spending a portion of your afternoon with us today, witnessing this outstanding performance by two outstanding teams. Once again, congratulations to the Springfield Chiefs and congratulations to the New York Institute of Technology Bears. We do not want to overlook them. They had a fine season, a 12-0 regular season mark. Once again, the final, Springfield wins by three, 15-12 over the host, New York Tech Bears. I'm Brian Evey, along with Tom Judge. This has been a presentation of a New York Institute of Technology Television in cooperation with the NCAA.